full of the interwebs. There, mic is on. We are of live. course. We smoke a 10 minute cigarette, and now no one wants to find a miniature for it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he doesn't have his out there? He wasn't we here are. last week. Hello, everybody. We are doing episode 6 of The Wake of Red Star. We have Cub, we have Mako, we have Poppy Chilo, and. Valtier. Yeah, he actually has a Twitch name. What's yeah. his name? Valtier. Valtier. Yes. <laughs> Finally, for our episode of, we haven't come up with a name yet. Hi, Belly. Hi, Sigris. Hi, Chaos. I'm pretty sure you're there. You have to name the episode after. Wait, like, why did the Bluetooth speaker get shut off? What, what? is doing? I didn't touch it. Nobody touched it. Like this is all playing through my phone right now. We have a technical issue right now, so we'll be with you in a sec. Bluetooth. Tango. Obi-Wan, shut up! Go be a dog! He is. Barking something. <laughs> Oh, technical issues are fixed, y'all. <laughs> Hi, Chaos. Welcome to the chat. All right, guys. Last time on the Wake of the Red Star, you were traveling back from the Grizzgain hideout with your grizzly booty in hand, the head of one leader, Grizz. A knoll that nearly killed Skinwalker Jane and Catalina. However, due to the ingenuity and firepower of Clay and Donna's party, you were oh, and Vane, who was NPC'd, John, come play your character. <laughs> um, they were able to uh, vanquish the Grizz Gang, only having uh, one escapee that they know about, the Lieutenant Krom, a goblin who apparently had been masterminding the operation using Grizz as a figurehead or puppet leader. Um, correspondence was found between Krom and the Drenalians in town. Um, you guys know them as the Pirates. Uh, I'm sorry, the Darylonians. Um, you were able to uh, find correspondence uh, incriminating the Darylonians for giving information to the Grizzgain about all the Lockshire Lane shipments and Valsadin shipments moving out of town with supplies of the Red Star. What time they would be leaving, um, who they would have with them, how well armed they would be, and apparently in return for this information, the Grizz Gang had agreed to offer them exclusive rights to uh, buying the Red Star that had been pilfered. Headed back into town, you heard combat out on the desert, and going to investigate, you found an old turtle with a tortoise that was moving scavenged goods from Mordheim down to New Fork. You rushed to the turtle's aid, and was able to rescue him from his own magical devices that seemed to have gone haywire and start attacking him in the middle of the desert. In this encounter, you met a new friend, Kaylin, an elf who uh, also is headed for New Fork to find a new life. Clay and Kaylin were able to hit it off rather quickly after the combat, finding that they had both devoted their lives in the pursuit of hunting and killing demons, both for different but similar reasons. The following morning, the sun rises on the hot, baked desert floor of the Red Star Waste. Coated lightly in red dust as you are every morning, you get up and shake off the dust and begin your few hours trek for the rest of the journey into New Fork. Adventurers of the Red Star Waste, what do you do? Starting by reapplying my magic spells to keep me both cool and clean. So you cast prestidigitation on a couple of important bits of gear to cool them down a little bit. You uh, cover the uh, smart bits and uh, and 
get ready for the temperature that will be rapidly increasing as the sun gets higher in the sky. Anyone else preparations? I'm yeah. just cleaning Preparing. my gun, um, fixing it, making sure it doesn't like explode on me. Uh, sure, no problem. Uh, give me a tinkering check. If you don't have the proficiency in tinkering, you can go ahead and just give me an untrained. But do you have the proficiency in tinkering? Um, I don't know. It just says I have tools, tinkering tools, and then vehicle land. So I'm guessing that's my proficiency? Uh, actually, it would be under your proficiencies on D&D Beyond. If you look at languages and proficiencies, most people don't have it, even if they have tinker tools. It's a, it's a rare... Yeah, it's, it's, it's under it? my proficiencies. Perfect, perfect. So you probably got it from your gunsmith class. Perfect. So go ahead and give me a tinkering check. <laughs> so the curse passes on. <laughs> it's just routine maintenance. You don't have to roll high. <laughs> Okay, burning inspiration on the first roll of the game. Good job. <laughs> Go ahead and re-roll. We hear a loud bang. <laughs> 17 plus my freaking thing is broken. So let's see. 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. 22, no problem. So you uh, you clean the dust out, clean out your chambers, re-oil your, re your gun. It is in proper serviceable condition. Prestidigitation. That's a weird word. Yes. Um, to also make clean, cool off any important things that. Okay. Right. Uh, so no problem. Yeah, you sit there, and uh, you'll notice as um, Catalina is uh, cleaning herself off, uh, Kaylin, the new elf, uh, sees and follows suit with her own prestidigitation. Magic uh, auras look slightly different as they do this. Um, you can tell that uh, Catalina has a uh, more trained arcane source of magic. It's very geometric shapes and, and traditional colors that she'd been taught, you know, hard blues, hard greens, things like that. Whereas um, Kaylin's magic seems more uh, nature-based. It looks more like um, it's more free-flowing. Um, the color tends to change with her mood type of thing. Uh, very, very similar to Skinwalker Jane's magic. Um, without all the nasty pops and bruises and splinter and bones and you know, <laughs> but as far as the magical aura goes, yeah, you can tell it's a nature-based magic. Um, which uh, I'm sorry, Catalina, go ahead and give me a knowledge arcana check as you see her. Notes. Um, you may have to look deeper into her source of magic. If she's an unlicensed practitioner, she might be in your jurisdiction. <laughs> He rolled a natural one, y'all. All right. <laughs> so did I. That's why I burnt my inspiration. The curse has begun. Yeah, okay, but this isn't worth it. All right. Um, that curse was no joke. Or yes, but as, as you guys get yourself cleaned off and off for the road, you can see that um, the bard you guys had hired, along with Donna um, and uh, the Val Satan moving company guy, is um, all talking to the turtle, and it looks like they're they're buying and selling some of his wares. It looks like the Valsade and Moving Company guys are like buying some cookware for his wagon and stuff like that. Um, and uh, you you see them doing that, and as you guys get yourself cleaned up and approach, um, seeing that the rest of the party is awake, everybody gets up, hitches up the horses, and starts riding into town. Um, Who's driving our wagons? We've got the Valsade and Moving Company guy driving one of them, and we've got Clay driving the other. Which is a smooth ride. 19 on the die, and he's proficient, oddly enough. <laughs> awesome. I don't know where the book that I usually use is at. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I put them in there. Your, your notebooks? Yeah, they're down there on the bottom shelf on top of the uh, little Tupperware there. They were, they were getting, like, exposure <laughs> damage to the pages, so I put them in. <laughs> All right. Um, what did you get on your uh, team stream check? Nine. Nine? Okay. So um, everybody's kind of used to Clay's ride being really, really shitty. Uh, <laughs> he seems to hit every crack along the way. Um, 
and uh, your couple hours journey into town does stall out when you break a, a wagon wheel. Um, so go ahead and give me a tinkering check to see how long you're delayed as you fix the wheel. If anybody Can wants to assist, sure. uh, then you'll have advantage on the roll as your party assists you changing the uh, wagon wheel. Letting the help do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Letting the help. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So uh, you're able to get the wheel back on, no problem. You guys are delayed about an hour in the replacement of it, but um, that does put you in the part of the day where it starts getting really, really hot before you guys get into town. So anybody that's not wearing prestidigitated underwear, go ahead and give me a Constitution save. My briefs are breezy. <laughs> Wait, Constitution saving throw? Yes. Uh, 16. Okay. Uh, you said 10? Just 10. Okay, so you guys are handling it okay. Your Val Satan moving company guy looks like he's um, a little worse for wear. The sun's beating down on him pretty hard. As well as Vane and uh, your the bar you guys hired doesn't look like they're handling it well at all. Um, Dom is fine. She's a hardy miner. <laughs> the bard is actually under my care. I'm casting it on her as well. Okay, so you go ahead and drop a couple of prestidigitations on her when you see her uh, getting a little too hot. And I cast it on the uh, company. Uh, what's what's his name? You said it last time. But I, I did, and it was in my notes, which got moved. Where are my notes? Uh, I asked if you wanted the notebook. I don't know if it's in here. Okay, um, Tolarian. So I cast it on. Oh, that's right, Tolarian. Yeah. I cast it on Tolarian. Okay, cool. So you cool them off, no problem. And you guys uh, finish your journey into town. As you uh, approach New Fort, you can see, <coughs> since it is uh, getting nearer noon, you have a clear view of the flat desert expanse that, uh, that this boom town is built in. You can see that there is a river headed off to the uh, west, and there is a river headed off south. And in the fork of these two rivers is the boom town of New Fork. You can see uh, off to the left-hand side what appears to be uh, some docking structures and some boats that look like they're dry docked right now. On the right-hand side to the river moving south, you see a very similar operation. Um, you're just seeing silhouettes of these out in the distance. You'd have to actually go to them to make out detail, but as you get closer, you can see these two shipping operations are actually operating about two miles out of town. Um, and as you get closer to the town proper itself, you can see before you a boom town of mixed races who are currently milling about town going about a normal day. Um, you can see the town must not have been here very long. Most of the stores and operations are just literally storefronts where there's a wooden wall up front uh, supporting a tent in the back. Um, you can see signs that say general store. You can see, you know, uh, different inns and things like that. And in the center of this town, uh, there are two structures that sound, stand out. One is a smaller structure that looks like it's completely well built, except for the back wall of it has been torn out. Um, it looks like it got torn out in some sort of explosion or something got tied to it and ripped the back out of it. And as you get closer to town, you can see the sign out front says Sheriff Station. <laughs> and you can see um, uh, the other structure that stands out is a large dome in the center of town with giant spikes coming off the back of it. This thing is massive and it dwarfs everything else in the town by comparison. It stands roughly 50 feet tall, not including the spikes coming off of it. Give me, for those of you that don't know what this is, so just Kaylin, go ahead and give me a knowledge nature or knowledge arcana check, your choice. Or knowledge history, actually, because it's in the paper now. <laughs> Look at the three skills and whatever you're higher in, pick that. All right, so, and that's a d20? Yes, so what skill are you choosing? History. Okay. And it was history 14. 14. Okay, it is recent news, um, and you were able to pick up a paper 
fairly shortly after landing in the Kingdom of Rubia, um, there was a town crier out there, and they were talking about uh, these grand heroes that had slayed the monster that crawled out of the Red Star. And apparently, there was an entrepreneur uh, from Lockshire who purchased the corpse of the creature and turned it into a bar. This creature was known as a Tarrasque, and it was apparently some sort of world-ending monster. The heroes that slayed it went on to go and challenge the Empire, fight their god, King Shasarak, and the most recent news is that they all died at his hands, except for one who had shown himself at the last moment to be a traitor, thus giving Shasarak the upper hand. This must be the corpse of that creature you read about in the paper. And in the front of it, you can see a sign that says, The Fat Angel, no spell casting, proceed at your own peril. Oh, I can't wait to get back to my room. I explained to um, Caitlin. Um, so this is the uh, bar. And I suggest you not to cast any kind of spells because it will backfire in your face. And I think we have rooms here. So I think we can stay here for free. We Part of your groups. deal with the Grizz Gain was to uh, get free pass or a uh, free room and board at the Fat Angel for a month. Um, Colton Wells made that deal with you guys. It was part of you guys double booking your job, essentially. Okay. Um, do Which I covers all of you. Don't Whatever. know if it covers Kaylin. <laughs> do I notice any residual life force or energy in this? Um, are you going to use a spell or ability to do that, or do you just kind of want to check it out? Um, where is it? I know I have... Where would I find that? Um, you have preternatural awareness that you for. could try. Um... You don't know exactly what type of creature this is, and you have to spend a spell slot to do that, and you have to decide what kind of creature you're trying to sense. Okay, then I'm not going to worry about it then. Then what you could do is you could just give me an investigation check. All right. Monster. That'd be here. Um, seven. Seven? Yeah. Um... Nothing really strikes you as odd. You can see um, as you walk into the bar with uh, Clay and the others, um, the double doors swing open, and you can see there's people inside. It's the middle of the afternoon, so it's not a large crowd, but there are a few people in there drinking and gambling, but literally you don't hear any of them. As soon as you walk through the threshold, it's like somebody turns the sound on, and you can hear everybody inside the bar playing their games and whatnot. Um, as you look around, you can see the creature is completely hollowed out, and uh, any structures that are built in there are built around the corpse of what is essentially a massive turtle shell, right? And um, is what it looks like, just with giant spines on it. Um, so, like, all the windows are where the arms and leg holes would be. The, uh, the stairs and the uh, furniture are all in the hollow of the creature. The rooms that are built are all built in the hollow of the creature not changing the natural shape of it at all. The front doors that swing open are two massive wooden saloon doors that open up uh, where the head of the creature would have emerged from. Um, it's a very, very unique architecture because they had to build around this creature, but it seems like nothing's disturbing the creature itself. Um, so you don't notice anything on your own except for you notice um, what appears to be a half-orc female, and she's kind of cussing to herself, as she's scraping away at something in one of the window frames. Is there another boarding place in town? Um, who are you asking? Um, well, I work for the company. They hired me on. Right. So, would I have access through that contract? Uh, you haven't talked to the, the head of the uh, okay. Valsaden Moving Company yet, but he is somebody that you're probably supposed to touch base with at some point. Okay, um, and you would assume that he's operating 
one of those docks, probably the one leading out to the west since that's the direction you came in on. So that's probably the river he's trying to clear out that he can start shipping goods back out to the west. So if you had to guess, you're going to meet him over there. Um, but uh, but he's not at hand immediately. Okay, because I'm, I'm not... Feeling staying in a giant monster? Comfortable <laughs> with the vibe and... <laughs> Right on. Um, as you're in there pondering these things, um, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check. Up yours. <laughs> Yes. Don't worry about it. What would you like to do? <laughs> it's five, so. You notice an orc female scraping away at a strange substance in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Oh, did we divide up the uh, loot already? Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah, they did I the division last week. week. I got notes for you on that, too. And okay. we're kind of broke thanks to a big turtle. Humanoid. Well, I'm kind well, of. you guys would be kind of broke. And I am going up from being pretty much broke to actually having money now. Does anyone have the notes on what the actual split is? Well, I don't think I was here for that. She does, uh, Letty. All right, so you all receive 25 gold pieces. Everyone except Kaylin, because she wasn't part of that job. Um, did you read that? Okay. Everybody received uh, 55 silver pieces each. This is a, uh, oh, are we turning in the bounty thing already? Not yet. Okay. And everybody, you already, ha- you already put it. Okay. This is what you and got everybody last week. We see 25 sharks of the red, uh, red sharks. Mm. The agreement of the party was to pocket um, 150 of the red star shards and split them up in 25 increments each and not report them back to town. I didn't know how uh, Catalina might feel about that, but everybody else seemed on board with it. So 25 shards? Yep. Are incredibly valuable. Incredibly valuable. Estimated between anywhere between 75 and 150 gold each. Since we never use Electrum, I'm going to use that for the shards. I just get on shards on other possessions. I'm perfectly fine with this. Right. Um, Vane, uh, once he gets back into the hotel, um, he'll go up to his room and sequester himself away. Um, the bard splits off and goes about her day from you guys. Um, Donna approaches the group uh, with her child in tow. And I just I wanted to, before we headed back to camp, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for saving my child. Playing with her kid. <laughs> Give me an animal handling check. Wait for a kid? It's close enough. She might hurt the child. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to thank you all so much. I, my kid wouldn't be here without you guys. And if you guys ever need to stay, you know, we've got a claim just over the river. It's uh, it's out towards the east. It's quiet. It's out of the way. You guys are welcome there any time. Thank you all so much. I wish I could offer you more. But I just tip my hat. I will... Time take the crossbow back from her along with the extra bolts she had her own. Mm. I got a twin. Of course, and she unstraps it and hands it over to you. Um, you it's uh, 15, uh, 15 shots or left. I mean, you're also partly responsible for saving your own daughter. This is the best outcome that could have happened. I'm sorry for... It was um, a sign. Sign. It was a sign. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about peasants. 
<laughs> and um, thanking you all again, she she scoops up her child and heads out of the Fat Angel. You can see um, as the doors open up, there's a couple other members of Donna's party out front waiting for her, and it seems like she's uh, taking her kid onto a wagon and they're headed out of town. What do you think about to the kid? He waves back at you. I will take my leave of you for a time. Where are you going? I'm going to have my driver to Larian take me to my employer. There are some things we need to straighten out about our con my contract. I'll meet up with you in, in time. And who is your employer? Um, is it Ari? Ari of the Valsaden Moving Company. Is he the one we're going to see or not? Would you guys have heard his name? But he he is the one you're going to see. He's the one that Vane made the deal with for the uh, oh. the one magic weapon for completion or of a thousand gold. gold or a thousand gold. Is there an empty table? Actually, he's at one mag one minor magic item yeah. or a thousand gold. You're assuming they've got weapons because all the guards that work for the Valsaden Moving Company have what a low enchantment magical weapons. Would there happen to be an empty table? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, this place really doesn't pop until the sun goes down, man. Right, because it's too time. fucking hot. To I'm, a, house. I'm taking all my little knickknacks and tinkering and throwing them on the table because I have to prepare all my druid spells. So I got to put on my chicken bones. You spill out your material <laughs> component <laughs> yeah, pouch on a table. Awesome. So we are going to actually go see him. We have a deal with him. The proprietor um, seems busy. Very busy. Natural one busy. <laughs> Wonderful. You're welcome to join me with my driver and our wagon. I'm going to have to join you too because I'm the one that's carrying the head. Oh, we didn't actually have to bring the head. <laughs> we did so. Uh, it says so in the chicken. Vane comes yeah. walking downstairs. Uh, yes, we did. It was part of the contract. Okay. I'll say the moving company line. See, the chicken bone says um, Can you do me a favor? Um, just uh, whatever whatever the best staff they're offering um, for a magic user. I, I have the research to do, so thank you, I appreciate I'll it. I'll pick out the best they got. Uh, what color would you prefer? I, I mean, I have a station out here. And he walks up the stairs. <laughs> Pink it is. Seems <laughs> <laughs> there, there's kind of actually... I'll tell him it's rose gold. Rose gold. <laughs> He seems much more distracted and preoccupied than normal and as he goes running back up the stairs. Don't go anywhere without me, as usual. Yeah, you know where to find me. It's fine. See you later, Ben. Ready? Are you coming with? Okay, um, should we meet back in two Are you hours? Coming? Who are you calling? Talk to? Oh. You. Oh. Uh, all my material components. You look back over at Skinwalker Jane, and her entire component pouch is just spilled over the table. I'll there's chicken bones. There's animal sinew. There's um, uh, eyelash with gum wrapped around it for some reason. There's just. A dead tick. <laughs> Let's get back in two hours, then we can dry head over there. Is that okay with everyone? Okay. Because oh, it's going to take claws. her a while to. Oh no! It all gets consumed. Doing. And I need to send off a letter. All right, so where are you guys headed first? Well, after I've consumed all the material components for the day. So we're going to go see Aerie. As you guys start to head out, the, the woman that was scraping stuff on the windowsill, she kind of gives a quick cuss under her breath and she's, ah, sorry folks, did you, did you need a drink before you go? I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. This, this just won't come out. And she sets down what looks to be like some sort of chisel or something. I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's so rude. Did you guys need something to drink? No. Okay. And no, I'm good, thank you. Are you uh, new in town? Yes, I am. Why don't you come back tonight? I'm, I'm sure my boss will want to meet you. All right. Suspicious. Your, uh, your name, miss? Kaylin. Kaylin, I'm cooking. She hands over a meaty half orcish hand to you. Go ahead and give me a perception check as you reach for it. Could you let Colt that we, uh, know that we return? Uh, yeah, I, do, I don't know where he wandered off to. She looks behind the bar expecting to see him, and he's gone. You don't know what he's doing. Twelve. Uh, Twelve? You saw him when you guys first walked in, but he, he didn't seem to notice your presence, even in a low, crowded room. Okay. 
Like, you kept rolling for shit. Uh, <laughs> um, 12, you go to shake her hand, and as she's standing next to the window, there is light trickling in from the open window, and as you look down at this meaty half-orc paw, she, um, she has, she favors more of her orcish heritage than her human heritage. Um, she's green, she's got uh, larger size knuckles, and she's got scarring across her skin. Um, it looks like laceration scarring. It's very, very light. It's not incredibly deep, but in, like, it's like a slash, and then there's, like, these little pockets that get deeper, and the light catches it just for a second, and you see this red glint shine under her skin as she shakes your hand, and then the, the light changes as she's shaking, and it's gone. But you just catch it for a second. It's like seeing somebody's wedding ring sparkle when you go to shake their hand, but it was this red glint, and, and she pulls her hand back and, really, really, come back, miss. We don't get, uh, we don't get many cultured folks here, and I'm sure uh, Colt would love to meet you. Yes, I will. Oh, I'm bored with you, you, please. It's good to see you, yes. too, Clay. Some... Good to see all I'm, I'm so sorry I was so rude. I'm just, I'm busy. This shit won't come off, and it's fucking getting worse. And she goes back to her chisel and starts chiseling away at something in the corner. I take her to a place with less ears. Who? <laughs> You're probably the only one that doesn't know this because I'm assuming this is your first time in town. The residents are... I think they're losing their mind. The red shard seems to have an effect on people who use it. The worshippers are almost cultists in nature. Um, besides that, you may have also noticed the animals of an acular. Whoever has too much presence of the red shard... I mean... I'm not exactly sure how it's going to affect people, including us. So, as you um, think of the 25 shards sitting in your bag, well, I mean, I'm probably going to store them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've noticed the more you're around it, the more it seems to be that um, kind of like gold sickness. But I'm not exactly sure. It seems deeper. They're actually worshiping it like a god. So, uh, do watch yourself around here. Understood. I'll keep my eyes open. Uh, give me a perception te- check as you have your first conversation with uh, Catalina. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, Catalina does have a very small insignia uh, pinned to her um, her collar um, that does mark her as um, as authority in this kingdom. Um, it's, it's not uh, an authority in your kingdom at all, um, but essentially you are, you know, brushing up on Ruvian law and you have been to several meetings where law was discussed with neighboring kingdoms and things like that. Um, they have, magic is legal in Ruvia, but it's heavily policed. All magic users are to be licensed, educated, so that they're not a danger to the populace. And Catalina belongs to the order to make sure they stay in line. Essentially, um, it's called the uh, the um, the Cobalt Shield, and their major purpose is to make sure that uh, mage law is enforced. And should a mage go rogue and become a danger to the populace, they are uh, judge, jury, and executioner in those matters. Uh, I have a beautiful smile. The essentially, she player. has the legal <laughs> right to kill magic users in this country. Should she deem it necessary. Alrighty. Um, how do I spell it? Catalina? It's like the Catalina wine mixer. You need to spell cat with a K. Catalina. I believe was the spelling. That worked. And that is new. Don't use our slave names. I mean, all I, all I do here is use slave names. I know you're streaming, guys, but, like, I'm not going to use Twitch names in my garage. Sorry. <laughs> I'm damn sure not calling this fucking Pop and Chulo. Thanks! <laughs> well, thank you. No, it's, it's don't use my slave name online, but I don't feel like I'm online right now. I keep forgetting that you're streaming. <clears throat> Which is kind of the point, I guess, right? If, if I'm conscious of the fact that you guys are streaming, I probably wouldn't run the same name, so I just would rather ignore. Um, all right, so um, you do notice that about her, and while you're having your first um, uh, meeting with Kaylin, go ahead and give me a history check. Nineteen. Nineteen. 
20. 20? That's the DC you needed exactly. She looks familiar. You're not exactly sure on her or her family name, but you are fairly certain that at the few meetings you've been where you were discussing uh, Mage Law, you've seen her face in the crowd before as one of the um, one of the parties from the Elven Kingdoms to the North, um, which I have a name for in my notes, but I haven't ran a campaign in the Elven Kingdom. Bear with me. Where's my notes? Didn't we just give them to you? You did, but I have many notes. A good DM always has notes. I'm saying that to stream, not to anybody in particular in here. <laughs> uh, all right. So from the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of Sanders Thay, which actually isn't a kingdom, but it is Sanders uh, Sanders. Thay, most popular for their colleges. Um, and their uh, their magic users. <laughs> she is from a kingdom that uh, is almost predominantly all else. Uh, they're one of the few kingdoms in the world that share freedom from the empire like Ruvia does. But unlike Ruvia, they do not have a tentative uh, alliance with the um, with uh, the empire at all. In fact, they are out and out opposed to the Empire, and one of the biggest um, points of contention that they meet on is essentially um, the Elven Kingdoms are pressuring Ruvia to be rid of the Empire, and Ruvia is pressuring the Elven Kingdoms to find some more middle ground type of thing. Um, and so the like the, uh, the magic policing laws and things like that, uh, this kingdom's not a fan of. Um, the fact that uh, the Empire can ship their slaves with them here and keep them as slaves in this country and move them back out type of thing and own them as property, they're really not about. Um, but um, these are concessions that Ruvia makes primarily for, for financial reasons. They ship a lot of shit and sell a lot of shit to the Empire, right? So they kind of meet them in the middle type of thing. And so there's been static between the two countries, but they do maintain an alliance right now. Um, they're free to uh, travel to one another, and they have a lot of open negotiations and debate between the two countries about this. And whenever the questions of magic law come out, your order has been invited to these meetings. So while you weren't serving as a dignitary or anything, you were really just coming up in the order and learning things, but you have been present in the room. And uh, very similarly, on the opposite side of the room with this elven nation, you've seen this woman's face before. Uh, probably five years back, you saw her face. And, um, and so it's just one of those things you can't really remember why, how, what family she belonged to. But she was there. And you do know the only people that were there are people of some import to that country, whether it be uh, a noble house, a merchant faction, um, one of the professors at the mage college is speaking up. You're not exactly sure what, but she was serving in some regard as backup for their nation in the debate. Okay. Well, it was lovely seeing you again. Uh, we'll see you again. Meet up in <coughs> two hours before we go meet your boss. Again? I'm right, well, sorry. She does that. Oh, okay. Something to say. <laughs> well, not all of this is rude as her. Well, Has anyone seen my dirt claws? I think I'm missing a bit. I wasn't claw. actually with you at that time. We were off in private, so you didn't see that happen. Did you say you were going to private? Yes. yes. All right. So I go back to the group, and shall we be off then? So everyone ignores your question. Slight hint of wind comes in through the front door and breezes past you and it says, hunt the bear. And then it's gone. Did you hear that? She says, oh, well, let's be on then. Let's go. You guys didn't hear that? Hear what? You said, what was it, the wind, not just somebody? Actually, it was just the wind? It was just a voice on the wind. Gotcha. The wind is speaking. saying so we have to hunt the bear. Good question. Maybe I should ask it away. Sticking my head out and asking the way. 
like every time before. The wind comes to you, it does not reply to you. <laughs> and did everyone hear that? No. Or just no, no. You, fucking, you were all convinced that there is some batshit crazy shit going on with that lady over there. All right. She hears shit and talks to shit that does not make sounds or listen. <laughs> Lay this time has not. Impressed. However, whenever somebody fell down, she went to go cast a healing spell. So there's some value to her company. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? Not the bear? No. We're going to go to the Mousey Moving Company. Wait. Yes. Wait. Yes. yes. I hope there's a bear. Are bears in the forest? There are bears everywhere. We just need one bear. I highly doubt there's going to be a bear in the desert. Like, as you see, as you see her, she's, she's I mean, doing I this. Mind and she's getting the clumps of hair off of her. Cookie looks down at the ground. Really? Yeah, there's just piles of hair. The trash is right there. <laughs> the trash? We'll see you later, Jane. Bye. Sorry, Bye. Cookie. See Cookie go behind the bar and get a broom. <laughs> <laughs> and as you open up the doors out of the Fat Angel... You can see the few people milling about town. As it gets closer to noon, there are definitely less people on the street. Um, you don't you don't feel any of the temperature or hear any of the sound. And then as soon as you cross the barrier, it's about 112 degrees right now. And it hits you like a ton of bricks right in the face. And you can see why there aren't so many people on the streets. However, uh, as you do kind of like shield your eyes from the light and get your vision back about you, as you look up and down, you can see um, Sheriff White in front of the sheriff station. This is uh, just a Silver Fox gentleman. Silver Fox gentleman, he's head to toe, um, just the epitome of the town sheriff, right? He's wearing blue cotton clothes. He's got a tin star on his chest. He's got a cowboy's hat pulled a little low. And you can see he's uh, chewing on the end of an unlit um, stump of a cigar right now. He's got a long sword at his side. Um, oh, I'm sorry. He's got a double-handed sword at his back right now. And uh, on his side, he's got a, uh, a Colt revolver. Just the person I wanted to go see. And uh, you can see he's talking to the people that... Uh, there's a couple of uh, laborers out there um, that are taking their break in the noon. And he's just kind of shooting the shit with them. You can see they've got tools and carpentry equipment around them. Looks like they're the people he hired to fix the sheriff's station. And uh, so they're just hiding in the shade of the building, kind of shooting the shit. Um, and uh, other than that, there's just a couple other nondescript people you haven't met about town yet that are moving. But it looks like they're hopping from shade to shade, just trying to get somewhere other than other than this time right now. It's too heaven hot. <laughs> I this walk up to him. This okay. Time. As you come walking up, he notices your approach. How's it going? Hi. Um, Grizz is dead. Excellent. Excellent news. But his little friend that they saved is still at large. All the rest of them ceased. Which one? Crom or Blitz? Blitz is alive. Blitz but is... It was Crom. Crom, honestly. Crom alive. Well, the good news is, Blitz was the son of a bitch that always got in trouble. The bad news is, Crom's just smart enough to get another game started. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But good job. You, uh, come on in. You earned your bounty. All right. You got proof of the deceased, I'm assuming? Going outside, whistling towards you. Bring the head! The workers on the side of the building take note and kind of... <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time they saw me chop horses at all. No, but it suddenly got their interest. I didn't say they were going to do shit about it. They are just paying attention and you notice them noticing. <laughs> While they're doing that, I'm over at the wagon uh, making it cool for the trip. Uh, the uh, only problem is prestidigitation can only affect one square foot at a time. Uh, which is why you prestidigitate your underwear, not your whole suit of armor. Got it. <laughs> okay. One foot of square material, um, which is actually a lot, 
but you can only maintain two casts. You three. You okay. can have up to three casts running at once, yes. Okay. Of different effects, though. So it's, well, no, you no. could do the same Save effect, those. as long as it's different objects, right? Yeah. So you cool three different objects. So you cool your panties, your bra, and your hat, you know? Or the seat that All you're right. sitting on. Got it. Which is the trick that this fool's been using to dodge endurance checks since the campaign started. It's just chilled underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Now, theoretically, you could, with it being a covered wagon, you could theoretically cool something inside the wagon, and maybe the cover of it would maintain the coolness. You could try it if you wanted to. All right, I'll try that. Okay, so what do you want to try to cool off inside the wagon? You, um, you go into the back of it, and you can see there's a bunch of... Um, uh, are, are you talking about their wagon or the Valsadin Moving Company? We're taking the Valsadin Moving Company wagon. So in the back of that wagon, there's actually nothing other than a couple of bench seating right now because they weren't transporting any goods. They were transporting you and a couple other people. Um, so, uh, oh no, that's wrong. They were coming from the ship. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Rewind. Do to Mancy. Um, so yeah, there, there are several crates of goods back there. And actually, there would be um, weapons back there. There is uh, a hand, like a handful of rifles, a handful of sidearms, things like that. Looks like um, a Drenalian weapon shipment that they were transporting for the Drenalians to the Valsadin Moving Company and taking them out to New Fork to kind of arm everybody out there. Um, in addition to just you know basic goods that they don't have out here, you know, soap, dry rations, things like that. Okay. Um, so what would be best? Maybe one of the crates with um, stuff that wouldn't be damaged if it were cold. Um, Crates of dry goods. All right, so put it in the center, make it cold, and then um, hopefully that'll keep the environment cold for the passengers. Okay, cool. Do you have, uh, is there like anything for like science check? I guess it's just a raw intellect check, right? There's survival. no like science. Survival. Give me a survival check. Actually, that's a good one for this. Oh, what are you? Okay. Dad. Is it okay if you turn down the fan? Are you hot? 20. Uh, 20? Yes. You know, as you're doing this, you go ahead and you um, you toss it uh, on like the lids of a couple of the crates, and uh, it'll take a while before you can tell whether or not it's working. But as you're doing it, you have the idea that a metal substance would retain the chill longer and actually make it colder. And if you were going to do this in your own personal wagon, a foot by foot square of metal just maybe, let's see. Maybe even like a couple of shields would be easy to get and just put those on the walls of the covered wagon or on the floor and use those would probably retain the temperature better and keep it colder. Just a thought. Mm, okay, so I'll be doing it and then I'll be like, mm, yes, and then grab the shields. That's adorable. Sorry, I can do that. <laughs> So you go, you know, that is a good idea. And you start looking through some of the crates and yeah, you'll actually find a couple crates that have shields and stuff and boop, 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 you press to digitate three shields. That'll probably work better. You'll have to come back in a few minutes to find out if it's working. Okay. Anybody else? I'm heading towards where uh, Catalina's at. Okay. I, uh, uh, you uh, you grab Grizz's head and... Yeah, before I go there, I'm just reaching into the bag I think that works. And I pull it out. And then, like, like once I get there, the head's out of the bag. Good work, Clay. You can put that away. And I put it back in the bag like that. And uh, so the bounty on Grizz was set to, I believe, 150 gold. But apparently my notes from that game are missing. I've got to have notes about this because I had a ton of notes on this stuff and they are not in this one. Yeah, 
Yep, this is the one I was using. Alright. Sorry, Bounty on Grizz is 200 gold. So, um, the sheriff will uh, go over to his safe. You hear the spinning dial of a, uh, a spin lock numeric safe, Gnomish Engineer. And uh, you hear it spin three or four times, pops it open underneath his desk, and uh, pulls out. Uh, how do you want this, Clay? You gonna want this in gold or platinum? Uh, gold's fine. I can just put it in the bag. All um, right. So he about, goes ahead and starts counting out two hundred gold out of the safe. Um, I I notice that there is a bounty for Blitz, and I do have his weapon. Does that count? See the weapon. Uh, yeah, Blitz was worth 30, no, yes, no. 30 gold pieces. I have the notes. Yep, yep, 30 gold. So he goes ahead and counts out another 30 gold for Blitz. As he's sitting there counting that out, it takes some time, and you start to notice how the accommodations of this sheriff station are not meant for long stays. As the sheriff has a chair behind his desk, there's literally nowhere else to sit in this place except for the two jail cells. <laughs> Um, and you're just kind of standing around there waiting. Back in, uh, wall of the jail cell ripped out and the middle jail itself missing from where it got ripped through the wall. Casting on scene, servant and sitting on him. <laughs> Catalina goes ahead and just has a seat in air. <laughs> well, while he's counting it, I'm going to um, get my tinker tools and just start hammering the boards, whatever. Because I, I have a little bit of energy to do that. Start working on the actual repairs? Yeah. Go ahead and give me a uh, tinker check. This is just the type of use that I would use it for. <laughs> What's the name of the bar again? The Fat, Fat Angel. Angel. What is what these rules today? Ten. Ten? You go ahead and start getting to work, um, but you can see why the other two workers aren't working right now. It's, it's hot. 112 degrees outside, mm-hmm. and the so whole I back area that needs the work has no the cover. <laughs> Um, it would be better if we wait until the sun goes down a little bit. We don't want to exhaust horses. And as you, uh, as you sit there and work on that, you get a little work done, but you're like, yeah, this is... This is pointless. For now, it would be good if we it's take It's not pointless. It's just too fucking hot to get anything really good done. You'd be better served working at night. And, um, but he gets your money counted out for you. All right, so that's 200 for Grizz. That's 30 for Blitz. Um... So, word did come in on that uh, wanted status for you, Clay. Yes, I've. Um, I, we just met a companion who told me about it. Look, I like you, son, and I knew you pop, son. And he's got a whole different story about how things went down. As do you. And I'm inclined to believe you because your pop is with you. But uh, we might be far out from the Ruvian government right now. But we're not invisible. Now, the less attention we have about wanting people living in town, the more invisible we get to stay. And I fucking hate paperwork, Clay. You understand me? Tell me about it. Yes. Don't bring any paperwork to my office. Get this shit sorted, all right, son? As I was about to pull out the ledgers for the pirates, I put it back. (laughs) I was, like, reaching for it. Actually, there's some paperwork that would be best to hand over to him. But, um, those could also be used other ways. Okay. What do you got, Clay? The pirates are in on it. They were working with Blitz. Or, not Blitz, Krong. And I hand it over. You hand over the correspondence? <laughs> could use that differently. Come on. Oh, don't worry, I have another... More papers. The sheriff opens up the top uh, drawer of his desk and pulls out a small pair of spectacles. This silver fox man 
showing his age a little bit with these outdated glasses as he puts them on the end of his nose and starts reading the correspondence. Well, this would be why I need more fucking deputies. You know how many good folk died at the hands of the Blit or at the Grizz Gang? Yes. That makes every person in that bar staying in that pirate's room conspirators to murder robbery and theft they have approximately eight based off my investigations previous possibly ten members of their crew held up in the fat angel right now that's too many guns for one man yes. he reaches into his desk drawer and he pulls out three ten stars and throws them on the desk it's for you. It's for you. I cannot accept this. I'm already found. We can't take up other things like this. Bound by who, miss? My own set of laws. You should already know. I'm aware. And are you aware how far away you are from your authority and your jurisdiction out here in the waste? There's no roads out here, miss. Backup ain't coming. There will be, and if you need backup, I can send word so I can send you some help. But as far as me personally handling something that it's just out of my jurisdiction. As freaking Clay is just quickly putting it on, I'm excited. Oh, yeah, look at this! Says deputy, <laughs> it's shiny. <laughs> Knowing their band, they have an informant among them. My guess is they're out of town already. He's a little too quick to catch on. Well, a woman of your authority couldn't find out. But a woman that picks up that tin star can go kick their fucking door in and get an answer for me. You ready to be a part of the posse? Mm. Do it. We'll see who else you bring in. No, no reason why you can't belong to both. It's just a small town sheriff deputizing. I want to be deputized. Catalina. It's for you. She takes it. It is shiny. Look at me. I'm law. Wee. I can assist you without taking one of those. <laughs> but I cannot I'm take the one law. Of those. <laughs> then just follow the others. Respect that door. Write everything off. off that they have to do on them. Um, I'll, I'll probably take that. Oh, I'll definitely do that. Yeah. That's She'll fine probably want it. <laughs> Are you taking it off me? Well, no, I'm taking it for Kaylin. <laughs> as, as, well, actually, around this time, Kaylin comes to see what the fuck's taking so long, right? <laughs> and as she comes walking through the door... <laughs> star at her face. Wear it. Be yeah, proud. We have authority now. <laughs> uh, authority to do what? As you look, and there is um, old for a human, uh, silver fox gentleman... Uh, standing behind the desk, he's wearing a sheriff's badge. He's wearing blue cotton clothes. Um, beautiful, short, well-kept white hair. Um, you can see his hat sitting on the desk at this point. And uh, there's 230 gold coins sitting on his desk. <coughs> that is slowly being pawed away by Jane. I kind of bagged it already. You didn't I'm, say anything. <laughs> I am bagging it. I already pawed it. How much did I get for pawing it? One. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone saw you take. <laughs> um, but uh, he's sitting there, and as Clay goes to hand you the badge. When did Jane start caring about gold? Uh, um, <laughs> it's so shiny. Oh. Clay, I'm sorry, but only the sheriff can deputize anybody. You miss are new to town. The name's Sheriff White. He extends his hand. Kayla Nalo. It's oddly well manicured and clean. Guy keeps himself well. Um, Kayla Nalo. That was his DC. Go ahead and make a history check. It's 
Twenty. Twenty. Which is exactly what you needed. You motherfuckers are rolling hot on this shit. (laughs) Um, Social security number. You. We read the manual. Very. (laughs) You very similarly recognize this man. But you recognize him from about 30 years ago. He was a young man then, in his early 20s. Um, So he's got to be about mid-50s now. Um, And uh, as you... uh, But you you can remember him from back then. And you remember him in a position of very high authority. In fact, he was the right hand of the King of Rubio. He was the head of the guard of all of Ruvian's empires. And you saw him at court with the king of your kingdom and uh, and your father uh, in his position. Um, we're all having meetings and negotiations and things like that. And he seemed striking and powerful to you even then. He was highly praised. He was highly renowned. Um, he was a much beloved captain of the guard. Um, you don't know whatever happened to a man like that to end up being the sheriff of a podunk boom town out in the middle of fucking nowhere who apparently is trying to dodge paperwork from the government for some sort of reason. But you do remember him from a different time. And he was a big fucking deal. And a good man to boot. Now he seems... tired. Interested, caring, but tired. Like he's just fucking cared too. It's a pleasure to see you again. I would be honored to be at your service. Being at my service right now means kicking in some pirates' doors and possibly dying. I am ready and willing. And I'm not willing to turn down help and he grabs the tin star and tosses it over to you. I'm sitting on air, by the way. Legs off the ground. Legs crossed, by the way. <laughs> Alrighty. Oddly enough, not odd to her, because she comes to, from a kingdom rich with magic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. Um, we don't have we don't have the means to arrest these gentlemen, and they're not the type to be arrested. So uh, get rid of them, get them out of town, or kill them. Whatever you got to do. Yes, sir. I'm going to do it right away. But we need to make a message that there's no murderers allowed here. Anyone want to sort of And no one conspiring with any of the gangs in the area. Can I um, have those ledgers back? Maybe we can get the more of the town folks to uh, join in. Uh, yeah, just take them down to uh, the post first and go ahead and... <sighs> Tell the postmaster to file it under uh, Sheriff White's usual account. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, to the post. You gotta do this quickly, fast. And um, Catalina, thank you for joining us in this. I know this is not your jurisdiction, but we do need your help. And I don't really want any arguments from anybody. This is. You fall points. down a lot. Yes, I do. And I'm sorry for that. I will change tactics. But... Well, I'm going to the post regardless. I have messages to send out. Okay, so you guys head down to the postmaster. Um, as you open the door, a little bell jingles. Ding, 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 ding. As you walk in, um, there is uh, the postmaster sitting behind his desk. He's got a long, spiraling pink mustache, a big, bushy pink beard, and hair that sticks out in three directions. One to the left, one to the right, and one straight up. Also all bright pink. He's got very, very tiny glasses made to look even tinier as they sit on the end of a giant, bulbous red nose. And uh, as you walk in, he pushes them up slightly. They fall back down, and he goes, Ow! Ow! Welcome back! Welcome back! What can I do for you guys today? Well, we have two things. Miss um, Catalina here has a letter to be sent, and I have a ledger that needs to go under Sheriff White's uh, account. Oh, 
That's Deputy Clay now. Well, Deputy Clay, of course, uh, you you said Sheriff White's usual account? Yes. All right, that'll be 10 gold, miss. All right. Sir, sorry, I, I can see through the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> Insight check? <laughs> yeah. He might be telling the truth. <laughs> Can you see the Great Spirit as well? Taking two steps back from this awkward person. Great third wall. <laughs> what? Is somebody controlling me? <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That'll be uh, tin gold for sure. Sure, it's usual again. It should never okay. exist. <laughs> and uh, the, the uh, correspondence? Um, I hand it all over. Okay, so you hand it over with the tin gold, and you can see that uh, he, st- he pulls out a stack of papers from his desk drawer, sets it down, and he casts some sort of arcane enchantment, and you can see a portion of the ink lift off the page and imprint itself in a perfect copy on the blank pages. And he hands you back the originals, takes the tin gold. All right, so that's going into Sheriff White's usual account. And you see him open up a drawer to the left, and uh, he uses a key to open it. And as he opens it, it's just popping with fucking all kinds of fucking correspondence, reports, all kinds of things. Go ahead and give me a perception Thank check you. real quick. Come on, look at me. Or just a... <laughs> or uh, it's not something you would necessarily notice, Jane. Is that a 25? No. That's a 13. That's not 25. Like, what? You need bigger dice. <laughs> By the way, did anyone else notice Mako's new dice? Yes. Yes. Yeah. One D one D D game, y'all. She buys metal dice for thirty dollars. Uh, <laughs> Eighteen. Is that how much she's worth to? Yes. I mean, you paid twenty bucks 18. just for the gold one. Eighteen. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, you don't catch exactly what, but you are pretty sure this is all correspondence that's meant to be sent back to either the authorities in Lockshire or the King of Ruvia, and he drops the document in there, slams it shut, and locks it. <laughs> All right. <Noted>. So, <laughs> what else would you like? Um. Oh, I would like to be the sent off to uh, the city where I come. Are there any bears in Lockshire, the Lockshire, um, To specifically the Cobalt Shield. Oh, absolutely. Is this um, a, uh, a free communication, or is this going to be a... It is um, definitely free. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, be, you'll be charged. They'll take care of the I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You you, mis, you misunderstand. No, we'll talk price after this uh, because this will determine the price. Is it an open communique or is this confidential information, ma'am? Um, in this particular case, semi confidential. Okay, so the confidentiality agreement is slightly more expensive, so that'll be 15 gold to get it all the way to Lockshire. They'll wow. take care of the on their end. I'm afraid they don't have an open account that reaches out here, sir. Or, ma'am, damn it, I can see through the fourth wall. <laughs> I'm aware of this. Stop sharing at my chest. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the right one. <laughs> this dome. Um, uh, so, yes, uh, 15 gold, and I'll be able to get that sent off for you. No problem. Check right, and pay. Okay, you, you pay it, um, you hand over uh, the communique you want sent. Uh, would you like the original returned to you or burned? I'll keep it. Okay, uh, give me just a moment, and he hops off his stool, grabs the communique off his desk, which the desk is too tall for him when he's on the ground now. Looks like he has a human-sized desk. Um, and as he, he grabs the communique off the desk and walks off to his private quarters in a slight waddle in his old man gnome walk, he goes, he shuts the door, and uh, a few minutes later, comes back out with your original documents. Uh, yes, uh, your message is sent, uh, secure, and uh, trusted. It will uh, arrive at its destination in approximately 24 hours. Thank you. No um, problem. So any word of that uh, spirit that I sent the message to? Um, I'm afraid we got no reply to that message, Clay. I, I do apologize. I told you... Uh, it might not work. It, it might not work with how vague a uh, description we had of the intended recipient. Um, uh, plus, the recipient 
may or may not even be on this plane of existence. I, I did my best for you, you understand, but uh, yeah, we, we did not receive a reply. Uh, we didn't even receive confirmation on whether or not the message was received. So when a person that could see through the fourth wall can't send a message, it's probably not getting there. It's pretty rough. <laughs> Even if you see the wings like uh, that person had, would that look? Um, do you have uh, some sort of uh, uh, caricature, photograph, uh, illusionary image you could show me? Sitting back on my invisible servant. Did you see my corporal wings by any chance? I honestly wasn't. Your invisible servant, thing. whose name is? Theobald. Was it? Reginald? No. Reginald. Reginald. That and I change it every week. Uh, we know. <laughs> um, Kaylin, how about you? Did you see my uh, wings by any chance that you were talking about? Yes, I did. Are you able to show image to? Do you have any illusion spells or anything? I don't think you do. It's no, got all ranger magic. It's ranger. Yeah, I don't have you any can't illusion use spells. Chase for something that big, but you can make a small version of it. That's not meant. No, even then, it, it wouldn't. Preston digitation doesn't do that. That's why there's cantrips that are illusions. They're different things. No, not <laughs> yet. I can probably. Uh, she can make your wings sparkly if you pop your wings I'll, out. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll, uh, after I deal with uh, today or maybe tomorrow, then I will show you. You can wings. make an illusionary image that fits in the palm in your hand. That fits in your hand, and it lasts until the end of your and, and, and To be honest, based off your experience, your wings don't look like this hallucination person that you've well, seen. Well, I never anyways. saw my wings. Well, you would have you seen them flapping around you, right? You would have seen the ends of them because they're huge, which they look like huge avian wings. The wings you've seen from this entity are made of fire. Oh yeah, that's right. That's the, um, uh, so. While words. while they are similar, they also look like they're in um, a fiery shape of avian wings. They are distinctly different in appearance. Okay. Um. That and. You've only been the um, you've been the only one that has seen them. When there were witnesses around, you were still the only one that has seen them. So you're still not a hundred percent sure whether or not this thing's even fucking real. You've hey. taken a couple hits to the head, Clay. <laughs> All right. Well, we should get to the business at hand, most likely yes. because the heat's not going to keep up, and the more hotter it is, the more likely are they will be indoors. Yes. If it gets too much I later, though. I need to uh, take back the uh, rented wagon and horses. Um, but we should do the... Uh, I heard magical item? No, if we go out and get bus. that now, that'd be a really bad idea. Like I said, if it gets too... If it cools down, they could be anywhere. They could be across town. Uh, well, we Let's should go to the uh, Valsay Movie Plate. What was Cheryl? Valsay Movie Company? No. Yeah. No, the uh, Lockshire Lands. Yeah, so we should probably just go to Lockshire Lands and return the horses. Yeah, Lockshire Lands Shipping um, is who you're borrowing the cart from. It's who you're borrowing the horses mm -hmm. from. Um, and um, That was it? That was it, because mm -hmm. you botched your trying to double book a job with Cheryl. Yep. That's why you don't ever dip your wick in the company ink. <laughs> I'll do that quickly before it gets too hot. Alright, so you guys head off over there, and uh, as you get to the, um, the Lockshire Lane Shipping Company, um, you open the door, expecting to see Cheryl behind the counter, and instead what you see is a uh, portly um, fellow. He's uh, human. He's wearing what looks like some sort of um, white smock over uh, just a very, very simple cotton clothing. Um, He's uh, dark complected in skin, um, and uh, he, he sees you walk in, and as he walks in, he's, ah, don't normally get visitors this time of day. Welcome to the Lockshire Lanes Moving Company, or Lockshire Lanes Shipping Company. Moving? Are you new? 
Oh no, I've worked here for some time now. I'm a part-time individual. I feel in on Cheryl's day off. So. Alright, well, uh, here's the keys to the, uh, to the... Horses need keys? No. To the ignition on your horses? <laughs> okay, well, have you return the, the cart. items? What's the cart called? The thing called? What is the wagon? Is this the wagon? It's like a little pack of paper. The water and the guns? And then so um, I'm giving him the uh, the horses are right there. Oh. Turning yeah. them all. Looks around. New deputies in town, huh? That's yes, good. Uh, That's good. We could use some more law around here. So, uh, I, uh... You are part-time, correct? Yeah, you yeah, I just it. cover Cheryl on her days Can I take off. an insight check? Yeah, go ahead. Is, I, but if I'm going to hand over the ledger, I want to make sure he's the right person. Ooh, yes, natural 20. Natural 20? Yes. Come here. Yes. Whisper mood! Right back, guys. This is how she dies. Yeah, yeah, so I just, uh, yeah, I cover Cheryl on her days off, you know, so uh, that's why I'm here right now. But, uh, uh, Before we start anything, where's Cheryl? Oh, I'd imagine she's at home right now. Well, what's wrong with her? What do you mean? You sound a little worried when you said her name. Give me a persuasion check. Well, sir, it's, uh, it's, it's none of my business, deputy, but it's just, it's, it's not her usual day off today. Is she sick? Not usually. And she didn't seem like she was, you know, getting under the weather or anything. So, she just, uh, well, she just didn't show up today, and uh, I got called in by the boss to open up shop. Um, can you let me know where she lives? You know where she lives. She's been banging her at her house since the start no. of the campaign. We were banging at the place, but I never met. I never been to her house. No, you banged at her. Uh, you banged at her work the first time. The second time, you were banging at her house. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I might have to visit Cheryl. Yeah, you know exactly where she lives. Um. Well, we need some help. Oh, yeah, what can I do for you, Debbie? Um, since we're under kind of contract with you, um, well, here, you read the ledgers. You'll, you'll see. Okay, you, you hand over the ledgers for uh, the, the correspondence uh, between the, the conspirators? He, he goes ahead and he grabs them from you and he's, uh, you want me to uh, give these over to the boss? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I can do that for you, sir. No problem. He goes and he puts them in the desk. Uh, as soon as the boss comes in from the uh, the docks, I'll go ahead and pass them over to him. All right. Do we need the ledges before we pass it off, Catalina? Are you there? Oh. Seems to be taking a meal at this time. Well. I can't really, well, <laughs> can you just let the boss know without seeing the ledges? Because uh, we want, we need to show it the whole town. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Clay. I'm, I'm not going to remember all this. Oh, okay. This is a lot. 
Um, I could I could have the boss go talk to you tonight. Yes. Maybe he'll go meet you at the Fat Angel. Yes. That, yeah. that I think he I usually will. wants a drink or two after work, anyways. Yeah. Right. I'll probably walk in with him. All right. Well, it'd be nice to um, have some company. All right. Who, oh, who walked in with Clay, by the way? Not me. Me. Because he falls down a lot. Okay. Everybody, everybody that has walked into uh, this conversation with Clay and has been in the room, go ahead and make a perception check at disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could be in there with him. There's no reason why you wouldn't be. Perception? Perception at disadvantage, yeah. Ooh, another nat 20! Then a 15. <laughs> 15 plus. I got an 8. 19. Uh, let's see. Where do I go for the campaign? I just signed in. Oh, yeah, um, you're not even on your it's been Actually, D&D is not working. d and oh, no. not working. Uh-huh. It's been kicking me out every time. It's saying, like, arcane something. It's like, uh, spells wrong or something. She I've been, seems to be in it. Like, if I hit, like, minus 10 gold. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, it worked. Weird. No issue here. Finally worked. Technical difficulties. We'll be back with you in a second. Hello, right here. Uh, how are Can't you? Leave. Anybody here? Say sure. hi. It's loading. My character is active campaign. Wake of the Red Star. View campaign. And you scroll down here. And you've got... Um, there. there you go, Kayla Nalo. You view. That should pull her up. You gotta be patient. It's an old pet. Yeah, really need a new one. There you go. Okay, and it was perception? Yes. Um, yeah, so, and then your skills are. Um, so, perception's right there, which you are proficient in it. Nine. Okay, so you got a nine, you got an eight, you got a 19? 19. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Clay, you do notice that uh, uh, outside of there being somebody new behind the counter that you haven't met before, everything else seems on the up and up. And, uh, nothing's out of ordinary in the place. It, it looks like any other day you would have walked in with Cheryl here, just a new employee. Okay. Well, apparently an older employee, but uh, you just haven't landed him yet. His name? Justin. Hey, hey, Justin. I'm Clay. This here is uh, uh, Crazy Jen. And this over here is uh, Kaylin. So Crazy they're one. part of uh, my crew. So if you uh, need any help, uh, well, so word, word's already getting around town that y'all took care of the Grizz game. And that's pretty much all the help we needed. Uh, they had shopped, stopped all that Red Star from getting down to uh, to uh, Lockshire. With that said, they had. They had taken quite a bit of it. Were you able to get it back? Because uh, the bosses don't want that back. What? The the Star Shard shipments that the Grizz gang had apprehended. I don't know about that. Hold on. I got to go talk to Catalina about that. Well, all right. I just was curious because the boss is going to ask about that first. Okay. All right, Justin. It's really great to meet you. And nice to meet you too, Deputy. You said uh, Deputy Clay? Deputy Clay. Oh, Deputy I love Clay. the sound of that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be uh, Cheryl's Clay now, would you? Yes. Well, sir, it's nice to meet you. She's quite fond of you. Quite fond of her too. She's going to be my wife. <laughs> That's what I'll, all be, I'll be happy to cover the shop on the day of her union. But... As you go walking out, you see a uh, well-fed Catalina in the cart. (laughs) You enjoy that? We all need a rest. Well, uh... And, uh... Uh, obviously, now that you've turned the car over to the shipping company, she's sitting on the Valsadin moving company with the uh, Teamster Tolarian sitting there, dripping sweat, looking very upset. 
What's wrong? My people aren't from Hotland, sir. And, uh, you notice, Kaylin doesn't look the happiest either, even with her prestidigitation going on. And anybody with even a slight knowledge of, or education, if you're from Lockshire and had any schooling, the elves come from a predominantly cold environment. They are from very, very north. Very north. Well, you'll get used to it. It'll take some time. They will never get used to it. It will take forever. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's genetic in them to hate anything above 60 degrees. <laughs> and it's 113 at this point. How well did the cooling work in the wagon? You walk back into the back of the wagon. Go ahead and give me a survival check. Damn it. Six. Six? You probably should have closed the back flap. If you closed the back flap, it would have retained it better. It would have retained it better. You go ahead and you sit down on one of the cold shields, and it's going to have to do. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Um, Tolarian kind of peeks in the back. and uh, Pardon my eavesdropping miss, but... Uh, those uh, Trinalians, all those weapons coming in and out of town are being sold through them. <coughs> and, uh, you guys should probably go get your payment first. If you're going to go in and start a fight, no, I, don't, I don't see why some magic wouldn't help first. Not to mention I'd love to get off this fucking street and over to the fucking shade with some civilization. You ready to go talk to some fucking R people? Because it's hot. Yes, I am. And I hand him one of the shields so that he can sit on it. Oh, you just go ahead and put that behind my back there, miss. Yep, there thank go. you. Oh, God, I miss magic. <laughs> Fuck this land. <sighs> and then once everybody gets on the cart, he, he cracks the reins and starts heading off. Uh, Using the rest of my insane serum to hold a shade over me. Or fan me, actually. Uh, Till it <laughs> Kaylin, you want to convince your new... Uh, he looks around at all the badges... Posse here, or do I have to do it? Convince them. Am I going to the fat angel first, or are we going to get your payment first? Payment first. Payment first. Oh, good. I don't have to convince anybody. I love having smart riders. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and it gives them more time to leave, which I'm fine with. <clears throat> I'm taking a short rest. I mean, really, if they leave, problem solved, right? He yep. said just get them out of town or kill them. <laughs> um... So as you guys uh, head off to the docks, um, it's a couple miles out of town. Luckily, you have an experienced teamster that makes this uh, journey to uh, the docks and town often. Uh, seems like, in fact, he's been doing it so long that you can start to see the wear of a wagon trail um, that he's kind of got in the area going. Tell me him on his shoulder. If you see a bear, let me know. He looks around. Clear now, ma'am. Clear now. I'll let you know if anything changes. And he just continues on. As you get closer to the uh, Valsaden docks, you can see that all the ships are dry docked. The water level is incredibly, incredibly low, preventing them from shipping any goods out of this area. The stench of the dead fish that had been clogging this river um, has subsided a little bit. Um, it's not completely cleared out. It's only been a couple of days since you guys... Uh, got the crews back to working on getting them out. You can see piles and piles of burning dead fish that the workers hauled out in the early part of the day and are letting burn through the afternoon. Um, but it doesn't look like the removal of this foul, fetid stench has done anything to raise the water level. If anything, the water level looks slightly lower than it did before. <laughs> um, and you uh, you do recall that uh, the uh, Lockshire Lanes um, shipping company was attempting to get a lumber caravan headed to start building the frame of a dam where apparently the uh, Red Star had ruptured the river and was causing the lower levels here. Mm -hmm. um, and apparently that hasn't happened yet. So, uh, with the water levels being low, all the ships are dry docked. However, you can notice on these ships uh, a distinct elven make to everything. Everything's very um, 
uh, not only built for function, but it is built for fashion. It is built for beauty. There is inlays of what appears to be silver laid into the sides of the ship. And it has this curving and flowing and spiraling like filigree design on the sides of the ships. And it comes to where it's written. Anybody that uh, reads Elvish can see that uh, it's written Val Satan on the side of it. Um, and then whatever that particular vessel's name is um, along with it. And uh, they've got three ships dry docked right now. You also see what appears to be um, a uh, just a uh, very fine structure. Um, again, with the same Elvish architecture, you know, a lot of curvature to the wood, um, artfully done, very uh, reminiscent of not only like um, the Tolkien Elven lands, right? Like if you if you know the elves from Lord of the Rings, very similar to that, but almost with a slight Japanese hint to their architecture, right? Just for our player idea of what I'm trying to convey here, right? It's just got a lot of beautiful arches and everything's very artfully done and seems to flow. Yeah, I need a mountain. Um, and uh, it just it really stands out from the rest of New Fork. It seems like one, the Val Satan Shipping Company, I'm sorry, Val Satan Moving Company, may be the wealthiest industry out here. They put a lot of money into this stuff. Um, and as you go approaching their uh, essentially their main business operation on the docks. Um, and uh, approach the doors. DeLorean hitches up the horses and he goes up to the front door with you, opens it up and gestures for you guys to enter. And before you even enter, you can feel the cool air wafting out of the establishment. I will remove the dust from me. Forever. And then the dust from you. The dust from you twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I also remove the dust from me. As you guys kind of... Mickey Mouse the dust off of you. Perfume for myself. And then all the dust just kind of falls off to the side and you walk in to this just breath of fresh air, cool place. And as you walk in, you can hear the slight sound of trickling water off in the distance. And you hear um, hollow wooden chimes kind of playing like um, flutes that's just kind of like this ambient background peaceful noise. You see uh, several elves sitting around a game of dragon chess. Um, they do look like they're common workers and they're having a meal, uh, enjoying themselves. Almost everybody in the room is elvish. You see roughly six, uh, um, six to 10 people uh, milling in and out of the room at any given time as uh, they're either coming out with food or leaving with some paperwork or what have you. You know, It looks like it's kind of a relaxing work lunch one might say, right? They're talking about business and stuff, but it doesn't seem like anything's too serious right now, and some people are just straight up relaxing. There is a, a gentleman behind uh, the desk that um, you recognize by the description of him to be uh, Ari Ridnafar, uh, the boss out here for the Val Satan Moving Company. And as you guys come walking in, oh, Kaylin, you've made it to us. Yes. Please have a seat. And he gestures and uh, Preston digitates the chair to turn towards you. And I remove my duster jacket and hat and place them. And um, the clothes I'm wearing. Are Allow me, miss. Okay. And the hat and, ja and jacket lift away from you as he makes a gesture with his hand. They float over to a nearby hook by the door and set themselves neatly on it. Thank you. And um, she's wearing. Typical garments of this area because you know she knew where she was coming, but they are fine. They are, you know, really high quality grade threads. The pants and the blouse, everything is uh, of this area, but very, very high quality. So you purposely went out of your way to study the. Um the dress style and fashion of the region. Yes. And then just threw some fucking money at it. Is what you look like. <laughs> yes, I perfect, do. perfect. And uh, you'll see, um, Ari actually uh, dresses uh, more like your traditional homeland. Um, he's got a lot of lawn flowing, um, almost like a um, 
like a tunic that has long coattails in the front and in the back with a split in the middle. Um, he's got um, very um, like loose in the hips, tight in the legs kind of pants that kind of poof out and then slim down on him. Um, almost like a, um, a like a sultan's style appearance, right? Um, and uh, uh, the other workers here obviously are dressed more for, for the local area, but it seems like uh, this is a gentleman that uh, takes a lot of pride in his homeland and refuses to bend to the ways of the common folk here. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then he offers seats to the rest of you after, after Seton and Kaelin. Um, uh, please, uh, forgive my rudeness, and seats turn towards all of you. Have a seat, have a seat. Um, my uh, associate told me that your associate came for a contract, correct? Yes. I sent Bang over here. Uh, he didn't mention that all of you were deputies. Is this a recent innovation? Yes. Yes. And not I. I he takes a quick questions. look at you and, uh, just a moment, unlocks something in the desk, opens it up, pulls out his mage license. 100% legal in this country. Locks it back up. Ah, so, excellent, excellent. I'm glad you're here to keep everybody safe. Uh, and I'm glad you guys have taken up the tin. That is uh, much needed here in New Fork. Trust me, we've had quite, quite the run in. So, I believe um, proof was to be uh, delivered for your services. Uh, do, do you have it with you? Yes. You can pick up a bloody sack. I, <laughs> I know it's not that I have a bag. I reach in. He, he looks at the room around him. Just a, just a peek will do. We don't need the whole grisly display. I gotta think for a second. Alright. Ah, there it is. Ah, bag of holding. Yes. Nice. Nice acquisition. We can use some more of those right here. He takes a quick peek. Absolutely. So, payment was offered at a thousand gold each, or your choice of a minor magical item. Have you guys decided uh, what it is that you'd be wanting? Yes, but besides us, there was uh, one other member that would require payment along with. Uh, Vane yes, uh, Vane is on the contract. Uh, Kaylin is here for a separate contract. Obviously, we'll get to your payment here shortly. Um, besides that, I asked for. Um, I had acquired one more help, which came in quite useful. She should be getting paid. I'll return it to her myself. Um, an elf by the name of of Valera. Ah, Valera. Yes, she's already come in for her payment. Our contract's secure. Yes, but thank you for keeping her in mind. She is quite the accomplished young lady. Yes, she is. Very powerful. So, as far as yourselves, um, Vane would like a magical staff. Absolutely, no problem. He makes a quick note. Um, Pink. Something. Pink. Something extravagant, if you can and mind. Pink. pink and extravagant, we can do. <laughs> he was minorly distracted, and I thought this would be fun. I think it uh, will be quite entertaining. I know exactly where my scrying spell is going today. I have a question for you. Yes. How much would it be to uh, enchant my dad with some kind of magical property? I mean, it, it honestly, um, that's no problem. We can make that part of your payment. Could the you time just for a enchanted gun. You're looking at even for a minor enchantment. It would probably be better if you just asked. Norm me normally, I would tell you I could have a minor enchantment cast upon it within a month. Okay. And uh, that that wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Enchantments and gnomish technology. Don't mix. It's not that they don't mix, it's that they're new. And because the gnomish technology that's been in circulation with the Darylonians and has been quite popular in town is just not as common with my people. And as we learn the new technology, there is um, there is a learning curve. Uh, we've had en enchantments go wrong. We've had enchantments fail. It's absolutely not impossible. We've had them succeed, too. It just typically takes longer, and I can't give you an exact time. It would be d 
dependent on the circumstances. It could be ready in the same month as anything else. It could be indefinite as we try to get an enchantment to stick to it. So as we're, we're learning how the magic works with the technology, I'm sure we'll perfect it soon, but I'd hate to have something that's meant to be an immediate payment for your services and have you waiting forever. So it's really your choice. Okay. Do you have anything that would... Uh... So you, okay, keep that in mind. Um, we also have... Of course, we could give you one of the pistols that the enchantment's already stuck on. Okay. You have heard that. Just putting it on your own personal issue it's is the difficult is the difficult task, yes. Um, yeah, I would love to have an enchanted gun if that's... Part of it. Disappear. Well, deputy, mm -hmm. he reaches into his robes and pulls out a pist uh, pulls out a um, essentially it's a Colt revolver is what it looks like, right? And he spins it, and he, as he slaps it down on the table, you can see elvish inlaid runes mm -hmm. on the side of it. Why don't you just go ahead and take my spare? Thank you, sir. That was very kind of you. No problem. What is you? Mm. It's a plus one pistol. I'll take a rapier if you got anything good. No problem. And he'll make a quick note of that. I'm having trouble with my changes. They seem to be disturbing people. I don't find it disturbing. That's what I always talk, but for some reason, other people seem to be grossed out by it. So what do you need, Jane? You see him cast a quick spell. Anybody want to make a knowledge arcana check on it? Sure. Wait, wait, do I have any knowledge arcana on it? Are you trained in knowledge arcana? Check your character. Yeah, let's find out. 16 for me. Uh, no problem. It's just a simple detect magic spell. Oh, I do. I got a 16. Same. You, you notice he's casting detect magic and he looks you up and down. Oh, um. Yeah, we can check and get to a um, fighter. Yes, uh. Wow. You're quite accomplished in nature magic. Okay, so, um. I'm assuming um, a disciple of the moon if you're talking about changing. What, what's the problem with your transformation that you're trying to fix? Those noises. Um, <laughs> bone snapping, skin sinew. ripping, sinew snapping. The way she does it is just... Well, how about this? Do you have Don't show it yet, extra please. change? Do you... Something I know can only change so much. Can I have something with another change on it or a ring? I've heard them. Maybe a bear skin. Oh, that allows you to change more often. More often than I currently can. Wow. I, I would love to help you with that. Um, I'm assuming you're Jane. How'd you know? Who told you my name? Your reputation is starting to precede you, young lady. What reputation? <laughs> you're quite the, quite the conversation around town. Thank you. See, he appreciates my... Yeah, no, okay, you. I do like you. You always tell me to shut up, but I'm crazy. That's why. I think it's charming. Mm -hmm. I tell you what. It might not. It might not help your changing process directly, and it might not allow you to do it more. But what if it made you tougher? So that should you cause the ire of any town folks that start coming at you with pitchforks and torches, you're a little bit more resistant to their ire. I like that idea. Mm, okay. And he makes a quick note, hands it off to um, a young man, and that young man runs off, and he entertains you with a, a few drinks of... Uh, Bubbling alcoholic beverage. Um, I have uh, and I say cheers. And anybody with any elvish culture, like yourself and yourself, uh, will recognize it immediately as a champagne. Um, and oh. as you guys are about halfway through your glass of champagne, uh, the young man comes back, and uh, I believe it was a rapier for the lady. So you got a plus one rapier, um, obviously elven make, um, has beautiful, again, uh, it's a... Uh, a steel blade that has almost a black onyx filigree going through it, 
um, in in beautiful elvish runes. Um, it's more of honestly, it's more a piece of art than a blade. Yet at the same time, serves as a functional weapon of war. This is exactly what I was looking for. Um, you were handed a ring, uh, Jane. Uh, the ring itself is a simple silver band, and in in uh, inlaid uh, on it for the filigree seems to be made of oak wood. Ooh. Uh, Jane, <laughs> I have my ring back and just put it on your finger. What was this ring for again? Uh, so people think you're married. Why would I be married? So they don't. I don't have that problem. Would you stop trying to sleep with everyone? I wasn't trying to sleep with anyone. You're trying to get married. Clay got your pistol. (laughs) Um, Tolarian already paid you for the shipment. He gave you the gold, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, the gold's been paid. I do notice you wearing a 10 star now. Um, I do understand that your contract was temporary while you made your travel from the uh, ship to New Fork. Uh, I was hoping to do some more business with you in the future. Your reputation kind of precedes you. Um, yes, it does. Thanks. So, um, but I suppose if you're a deputy, you'll be sticking around. Yes, I do plan to uh, stay a while. I was uh, curious, are there any more, is there any other boarding facility other than the Fat Angel? Well, the Fat Angel would probably be the finest. Uh, The conditions we have here are quite frankly beneath you, Uh, and without being as vulgar as to invite you to my personal abode, um, there are some other smaller uh, establishments in town, but again, not really befitting a woman of your stature. To be Why perfectly do you see honest, resistance? even though you think the fat uh, angel is horrible, it's surprisingly well accommodated. The owner and proprietor is a gentleman. I, I would vouch for the proprietor there. Coat Wells has done a fine job. He's a a bit reckless with his family's money, but that can only be to your benefit as a patron. <laughs> yes, fine wines. In fact, his family are wine makers. All right, I shall take a boarding there. The name could have been better selected, but other than that, you won't have <laughs> the and whatnot. And I do have um, <coughs> other jobs in the works as well, so. I would love to remain in your employ when needed. However, know that I have other obligations as well. I heard um, you came in with a turtle scavenger. Yes, we did. Horace was his name. Horace. Excellent, excellent. Do me a favor. The next time you speak with him, you are working with him, correct? I got that information correct. I am. Excellent. The next time you're uh, working with Horace, could you please send him my way? I'd like to go through his wares and see if there's anything we need. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, besides the ones that were killed, um, besides the main leader, one did actually get away. <laughs> the rest of the band has ceased. Um, but the one who's kind of leading them chronically, he managed to make it out. By the way, Jane, once you attune to it, uh, it's a ring of natural armor, which works when you are and are not shape shifted. So, so now, is it in the DMs now? It is. Yeah. The pirate scrolls, do you still yeah, have so it? It'll, it'll yeah, just add one to your AC regardless of what form you're in. So, uh, how about it? Um, I did notice in the shipment, one of the crates was labeled weapons. And I wanted, I was wondering what it would take to outfit myself <coughs> uh, with a couple of your guns, I believe. I had the opportunity to... Um, combat on the way here and I was very impressed with the gun work of Jane here. <laughs> you favor the rifle, he says, looking at the rifle strapped around your shoulder. An elf favoring a rifle. How weird. Um, As Clay like literally just kind of sunk in his chair. <laughs> like, really Ego slap. Uh, um, no, I, I, the, the thing is I, I don't know much 
of these weapons. That's bad on the pasture. Uh, quite yeah. frankly, none of us do. Uh, the Darylonians refused to share them with anyone outside of their country until recently. Apparently, their interest in the Red Star outweighs their secrecy of these tools. So, uh, let's see here. And I was duly impressed with both of the guns in play. Yes, yes, thank you, Kat. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> so the rifles currently are selling for 600 gold. And I was actually looking to something They're smaller also to until I can between the learn them and, and be proficient the water at them. was supposed to be sold since we had so, water. Um, water. You can get so, revolvers for 300 gold. We stole water from the guys. Oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah. I didn't write it down. So water and I guns. So the water was actually just valuable to guns. Well, I'm not selling my guns. Yes. And, and, and the gold. bullets are four gold each. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Eight gold each. Okay, so... um. A bow is a very beautiful weapon. <laughs> There's an elegance to it. Of course, if you're looking to make some money, there is other arrangements we can come to. Well, how about if I... S- let's, let's go ahead and uh, discuss Very these arrangements. Sure, let's um, go ahead and step into my office. Anyone else interested in some work? Um, I'm actually have here for some more information for you, actually, and for the Valsay movie company. Mm-hmm. Um, we need your help, and I hand him the ledgers. Yes, and without looking at them, he picks them up. Let's talk about this in my office. Yes, sir. Um, before we continue, um, I would like to have information that you have on the red stone. Anything that you've experimented, I've only noticed so far it's changed on personalities, um, and it's amplification of healing magic. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not a researcher. Uh, all these are being shipped off and headed up north to our colleges, where they can research it more appropriately and uh, actually publish those results to the world. Figure out exactly what this material is capable of. Well, In my personal experience, would you like to purchase some? Yes. Oh, now my turn? Okay. I do remember recalling that they change animal behavior. So when animals begin to mutate, when they're near the red stars, shots. So that's why the animals are acting up. The longer you are near it, um, it changes your body. Again, let's discuss this in my course. Bye. There's too many people out here. I guess I don't see anybody. There's you look around people. and there's eight people that are very, very intent on your conversation right now. Oh. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have said that then if I knew. He tried to drop you a hint three times and you raised your hand and made a snarky remark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of kept it to just the sounding okay. of red stones as far as that goes. Um... So, uh, as you guys walk into uh, his private chambers, he shuts the door, and you can see him cast, um, well, we'll just use your arcana checks from before, um, he casts an arcane lock spell on it, um, shutting it behind him, and he sits down, um, it's a more leisurely atmosphere than business-like in here, he's got, like, um, uh, the seats are almost like beanbag cushiony style, right, it's kind of a lounge, there's a hookah set up on a table, and uh, he goes over and prestidigitates some fire on the hookah, takes a lawn drag off of the uh, pipe. You can see there's several other hoses leading to other pipes, and he kind of gestures uh, for you guys to seat yourselves and have a smoke if you enjoy. And as he blows out the smoke, um, yes, and he tosses the ledgers on the table next to the hookah. I appreciate you bringing these to me. Who else knows about them? Sheriff Uh, White? You're deputies for a day and you're telling Sheriff White everything? 
Uh, I dropped her the, the hint that uh, we could have used it for something else, honestly. There's so much better ways to make money around exactly. here than the law. I would have told I would have sold it to you or sold it to them. You but all did come here to make money, right? No. I'm here to stop the pirates. I'm, I'm here, here to, to make money. money. Making it mostly invaluable. Uh, not bad. That's fine, Catalina. I am here to stop the pirates. I am not here to make money. Why are you here to stop the pirates? Exactly. Because they're the one that's behind murdering all the fine people here in this town. And I'm here to stop them. People die all the time. Look, those pirates sold a commodity. They sold information. What was done with that information was the fault of the Grizz Gang, not theirs, which you handled, which we hired you to help handle and have paid you handsomely for. These pirates, in addition to that, have armed the good folks of New Fork, allowing them to defend themselves against this wild and hostile environment, bringing these weapons in. More than that, they brought those weapons in on my ships, making us incredibly wealthy and able to pay all of you very handsomely to make sure that, as the law has deemed fit, the pirates be excommunicated from the fat angel. Okay. And your job is done. That's fine. I'm willing to offer another thousand gold each or another minor magical item, your choice, to ensure that these troubled individuals are seen safely out of town, unmolested, where they will exit upon one of my vessels and not return to trouble you any further. That sounds like a fine plan. I do not want to murder any more Should people. any of them receive any injury, this offer is null and void. Yeah. Is that fair enough? Yes. As yes. long as if they're out of town, I'm happy. Well, I think we're going to do just fine dealing with the new law in town. I appreciate your understanding. Alright. Seems like you have some contact with that one pirate that you were talking about who wanted, who told me, or told everybody that I was wanting, or told you that I was wanting. Maybe you should go. You don't know about that? You told us. I didn't tell you who told I, me. You told us. I didn't tell you who told Recorded. me. Recorded. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And we will take a break while Letty and Noah argue about this shit because I need to smoke. <laughs> you can find it. I'll believe you, but I don't believe I ever gave you my contacts because I'm not the type. Flip it, bitch. Watch <laughs> <laughs> out. Because you have a habit of uh, hey, is that a quest? hearing things that um, happen without about the considering them blocked? to be part of something I told. I never yes. give you guys information that I hey. have, ever. I'm We're not.
exit from New Fork. What do you do? Well, since three of you are now carrying uh, deputy badges, I would assume it would be best if you guys just report to the uh, sheriff and uh, let me take care of the rest. Okay. If I need you, you can be standing outside, but I don't want you to be seen by them because it can create an issue. Uh, we'll use this cart. We'll just escort them straight in and out of town. Uh, Tolarian kind of looks at you and looks back at the cart. And, well... Yeah. Do you have a bigger one? I mean, I'm not going back in town until tonight. It's hot. Mm -hmm. um, that and you guys aren't officially contracted with the movie company anymore, therefore you don't really have access to this card anymore, so I'm going to have to charge you for the trip. Um, if you want to go now, it's 100 gold. If you want to wait till tonight, I'll carry you guys in for free, because I'm going that way anyways. Oh, we have so sad here. All right. Well, then Tonight's you fine. All, I'd rather do this in the cover of night, anyways. You all enjoy the hospitality of our main area. I'm gonna get myself some sleep. It's been a long, hot day. I want to be rested up for tonight, so that I can go to the Fat Angel and, uh, well, procure the services of one of the only three women in town that offers said services. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Back to Aerie. So the sale of Red Crystal? Uh, oh, you walk back into uh, his uh, private chambers, give a, a slight knock on the door, and the door opens up, and he's still sitting there uh, smoking. Seems a bit in thought. And, Did I forget something? I'm sorry. Come on in. As you walk in, the door shuts behind you. Um, yes, the Red Crystals. The Red Crystals, yes. Uh, yes, I do want those. Um, what are you selling for? I believe their going price was was it one fifty? It's worth anywhere between seventy five to one fifty. You don't have enough experience in town to know what makes the price vary, um, but you do know that's the estimated worth of each one. Mm. Eighty five a piece. So you would probably get a few low and quite a few high. Either way, you should be earning. Higher than what you were expecting. Can I take a look at what I'm purchasing? Certainly. You lay out the crystals and he looks over all of them. Picks one up and holds it up to the light and gives it a twist. Not exactly sure what he's looking at or what he's looking for, but he seems to inspect each one very, Asking very carefully. Him. For future reference. Trade secrets, my dear. Trade secrets. Sits one down. And as he goes over all of them, um, I can offer you 50 gold apiece. Hmm. Oh, since I... No, let me... Can I give a, a roll? See if he's giving me a fair price. Uh, inside check? Sure. Sure. Yeah, inside check. Oh, natural seven. Hmm. Could you go 60? Do a persuasion if you don't mind. Go ahead and give me a persuasion. Uh, 19. 19? Uh, I'll meet you in the middle. 55 each. Pleasure. 55 for 25... Crystals, uh, 1,375 gold. The crystals are worth a lot. And in pounds, what is he carrying? Each each sky shard is about the size no, of... No, the uh, gold. 1,000? 1,350? How yeah. much is he carrying? Yeah, that's... Yeah. Why don't you go fucking ask him? 1,350? <laughs> mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, do you prefer gold or platinum? Oh, never mind. It's platinum. It's um, I'll take platinum for the 360 and 4,000. That's a good trade for a match platinum, correct? It is. 
Uh, <coughs> that's what I'll be taking. What do you have? Uh, any uh, minor enchantment to a weapon. Um, uh, low uh, magic uh, rings are also available. Cloaks, things like that. No, oh, a magical ring of shielding would be great. Um, ring of shielding. Hmm. Where's my DMG? Uh, are you talking about like the brooch of shielding? Um, the one that blocks magic missiles. The DMG doesn't have pricing. I know it doesn't, but it has the rarity of the magic items in it. Let's take equipment. Ring. So cold. Why am I so cold? Um, there's mind shielding. That is a low rarity item. There are um, rings of mind shielding. Yes. Is that low rarity? Yeah, it's green. And um, to magic that other creatures to read your thoughts, determine whether you're lying. No, I would totally take one of those. Uh, you want a ring of mind shielding? I like your style. There are potential drawbacks to that ring. You're aware of it, right? Like such. Uh, should you die while wearing it, your consciousness is trapped in it for eternity until somebody else dies wearing it. Or it's trapped there with it. Some would say your soul, but I leave that for the religious types. Hmm. That seems pretty harsh. It's enough that I already have a servant that's forced under my servitude. I wonder what ring he was wearing. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's an excellent ring, um, and it serves a lot of purposes. I just want to make sure you're aware of the potential downside of it. I'd hate to give you something without all the information. Okay, so this isn't actually as strong as the other one. The ring of mine should be? I mean, it depends on how often you lie. Rena Mindshield is really, really cool if you're somebody that's like purposely trying to hide your identity or like um, a lot of times you see like um, creatures that are close to human are very fond of these rings because it stops them from being identified as say like vampires or ghouls or things like that. You know, you can't use magic to just kind of read their mind and find out that, you know, all they want to do is drink your blood right now. Um, now, the one I thought you were talking about is actually called a brooch of shielding. That's what I was going to look at the rarity on. And that's the one that like stops magic missiles and things like that. That sounds pretty interesting. Actually, I would probably prefer one of those over anything. Let's see. Um, Just because of my... Roach of Shielding is an uncommon item. Okay. Um, so a little bit more pricey. It does require attunement. While wearing this brooch, you have resistance to force damage, which means any force damage spells or anything like that, you're going to take half damage from. Nice. Um, and you have immunity from damage from the magic missile spell, right? So um, pretty good ring, uh, or I mean pretty good brooch. It is slightly more expensive. So if you're willing to forego <coughs> all of the gold, and let's see, that would make it a difference of typically an uncommon item, you're gonna be looking at about 3,000 gold. Um, Minus the 1,350, I said it was, from your shards? Yeah. Um, that leaves a difference of 1,650 that you would owe on the item. Um, and your persuasion check was a 19, right? Yep. So. If you added 1,500 to it, he would sell it to you. So I'm short. You're short right now, 1,500 gold. That's <coughs> too much. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty pricey item. Hmm. In that case, uh, 1,000 for just a plus one armory? Armor is very expensive for enchantments. Um, it's much more expensive than weapons, oddly enough. Um, and a, uh, a weapon he can part with for a thousand gold, but honestly, even the low enchantment armor is going to be more expensive than the brooch of shielding mm -hmm. you were just looking at. Well, I was thinking like a ring of shielding, like the one that actually. Like, like a ring? Well, it gives okay, you like a plus different. one to armor. Yeah. Rings are a lot better than armor enchantments. Um, let's see here. Rings. I don't even 
seen. I don't even see it in the thing. How weird. Rain of protection, it's here. Um, it's just very expensive. Um, something that is more in your price range. Tree is. action. A ring he cannot do, but similar enchantment. Similar enchantment, Cloak of Protection. It would uh, give you a plus one bonus to AC and your saving throws while you're wearing the cloak. That will do. All right. Fair enough. So he'll throw in the cloak for in lieu of the thousand gold and uh, give you the difference in platinum. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, that'll be all. Thank you. Okay. As but always. You were talking about other jobs. Did you have anything lined up? Yes. Get my business associates out of town alive. That's my primary concern right now. They're I'll too be able valuable to, to us. I'll be able to take care of that. No problem. I appreciate your help. And uh, as you uh, leave the room, um, you can see uh, him still inspecting the uh, sky shards um, as you walk out the door and it closes behind you. <laughs> I'm good to go. I'll catch up with you guys. No, oh, as you walk out into the, the main room, you can see they're all sitting there enjoying the accommodations until nightfall. Um, if you guys aren't doing anything special, special nightfall will hit, and Tolarian will let you know that the uh, horses are ready and he's headed back into town. Um, well, not quite nightfall, dusk. The, the sun is low on the horizon. And as you guys um, start heading back into town, uh, he asks where you want to be dropped off. That angel. The big fat angel. That angel. Very well. And... He heads off over towards the fat angel, stops the cart, lets you all off, and promptly makes his exit. Because fuck being around here, he kind of knows enough to know he doesn't want to be here tonight. Um, <laughs> I'll meet you guys uh, a little bit later. I need to go speak to somebody. And I'm going to go ahead to Cheryl's house. Okay. Cheryl's house. Okay, you're going to head over to Cheryl's house. Okay, you're over to Cheryl's house, all right. And oh, it doesn't show that it affects the armor class when I equipped it. Uh, you're not attuned to it yet. You need to actually attune it. What was the bartender's name? Are you I'll be one? doing that in the meantime. Yeah, it'll. Um, you can do that easily enough while you're uh, waiting for the cart to arrive. It only takes an hour to attune to an item, so at this point you're attuned to it. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you're going to do the same with your ring? Yeah. Okay, so you're attuned to that now. The bartender of the fat angel. Bartender of the fat angel uh, is either Cookie, which is the half-orc female, you have heard the name, but have not met um, Colt Wells. Seems to be the proprietor there, who also doubles as a um, bartender when Cookie's not available. As you guys uh, walk, are you walking into the Fat Angel? As you guys walk into the Fat Angel, you can see that it's actually Colt Wells who's behind the bar tonight. Um, and uh, as you walk in, uh, the crowd is a bit more popping tonight. Seems like uh, one of the uh, diggers has struck a uh, rich claim of the sky shards, and it looks like the house is already in the middle of a second round that he has bought for the bar. Um, and everybody is cheering, jovial, as you walk through the doors. The music blares up. Um, there is a pianist at the piano tonight uh, playing away. There are several card tables going. Looks like they're in the middle of some sort of uh, card tournament right now. Not exactly sure the game they're playing unless you have gambling as a proficiency. 
anyone, anyone. Gaming has a proficiency for cards specifically. Cards? Yes. I do, but I do. But proficiency? Like, I know. Um, I know. Kalen is proficient in dragon chess. Three dragon ante myself. Three dragon ante is exactly what they're playing. This is all strange to me. <laughs> yes. Uh, somebody very familiar with the card game. <laughs> um, you can tell they're having a three dragon ante tournament right now. And you see the rules of the game are such. And I'll spend a minute. Begin explaining the rules. Go ahead and give me a persuasion check. <laughs> uh, I think it's nine. Skills. Yeah, nine. You're about four sentences into explaining the game to I Skinwalker realize. Jane before you realize she is exactly the person you want to play against. <laughs> we'll play a few rounds. A little bit of light gold on the table, which should be good. You'll get the hang of it real fast. <laughs> but um, after business. Uh, the rest of you, please, uh, like I said, keep those your badges out of sight. It would be most befitting until later. Most of the town will probably already know, but it's better that you don't give away. I'm going to go talk to the to somebody I know. And everybody does seem a bit too in their cups to notice. Uh, you guys stash your badges or are you keeping them on? Stash it. Okay. Everybody's too busy in their cups to really take notice of you guys slipping your 10 stars into your pocket, you know? And as you walk in, um, Colt, who's very attentive tonight and on the game, um, Oh, welcome, welcome. Back for more and a newcomer of fine, fine fashion. And one cultured enough to know that when in Rome, you look the part. Please, please, tell me your name. Have a drink. My name is Kaylin. Kaylin Colt Wells. I'm the proprietor here. How are you doing? Good. It is a pleasure to meet you. What would you like? I have anything from the home. What would she like? Because she had the champagne earlier. Mm. A glass of champagne. Champagne? Do you want that chilled? Yes, please. A woman of class. And he goes ahead and takes a uh, glass of champagne and... When he hands it to you, the glass is just slightly frosted at the bottom of it, just enough to keep the drink cold. Um, usuals? I'm not there. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You took off. Um, usual? I'll take water. That's what I said. Your usual. <laughs> and he goes ahead and hands you a glass of water. Um, is Clay with you? Do I need to break out the whiskey? No, he left. Okay. And Can I follow him? He tends to fall down a lot. Uh, yes, he does, into other people's beds. Um, <laughs> then I think he needs rescuing. <laughs> um, so as you sit there and have drinks, Catalina, what are you doing? Well, first I need to go find Vane. I have a wand to give to him, I'm assuming. Uh, the staff, yes. So you go up to uh, Vane's room uh, and give a knock on the door, and you don't get an immediate response. You give a second knock... And a few moments afterwards, you're, uh, yes, 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 and the door slightly creaks open. You can see Vane, his eyes are kind of tired, like he hasn't slept or rested or anything. He's got kind of bloodshot eyes to him, and, oh, come on in, come on in. What have you been doing all day? Research, research, what have you been doing? Well, things have gotten complicated in a little bit. I'm going to go ask the uh, proprietors up in the top, the, uh, the pirates, to leave the premises before they're killed. Um, because... Um, hold on, you're asking who to leave before they die? What? Uh, so the pirates, they were in, in league with the uh, goblins and the gnolls. Um... That's a lot of guys in a very small room. Yeah, which is why I'm going to ask them to leave politely. Um, their boss is already knows about what happened, and he's asking me to leave, have them leave without, hopefully, 
causing the disservice. Who's their boss? Um, the people who paid you this, apparently. Rose gold. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautifully inlaid. Alps make weird things like this. Just don't mind the color. That's something that's... It's their personal mark. Uh, it's persuasion. Paint. I'm going to roll persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> you can roll persuasion you want at disadvantage. It's a one. <laughs> <laughs> it's pink. Rose gold. It's beautiful, isn't it? Rose gold. It's going to catch on, trust me. My one cannot lie. <laughs> Elves. I mean, Elminster made purple work, right? We'll see what we can do. <laughs> Royalty makes the weird. Uh, they, thanks, and he <laughs> tosses it on the bed. And uh, anyways, this um, okay. Um, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be wrapped up. I'm gonna be honest with you. This, this stuff is holy. What are you looking at exactly? And you, and you walk over, and on the opposite side of the bed, there's an arcane circle that's been drawn out, and inside of it um, is the star shards that he has from his cut of the share, and um, and give me a, a arcana check. Uh, Nineteen. Okay, 19. You you recognize the runes that he's drawn because he, he uses the, um, even though he's a sorcerer, he uses actual schooled um, arcane runes like a wizard does. So you're very, very familiar with the pattern he's drawn out. And it is an identify uh, ritual casting, essentially. Okay. These, um, I mean, like, well, I guess it should be obvious. It fell out of the sky, right? These are not from around here. And as a result, um, theory would suggest that magic being a innate source from the material plane that you're on yes the rules from different places have different magic rules essentially right so Such it, as like it, the Feywild if, if you're yes yeah if you're from this plane magic works a certain way if you're in another plane magic works a different way uh, try to cast a fireball in the elemental plane of fire and see what happens to you right it's catastrophic whereas here very contained by comparison, right? I guess that explains the creature's yeah. reaction to magic. I don't know where this is from. I don't know the rules that it is operating by. This is not from a known plane. This is going to take a lot of work and a lot of research to figure out exactly what it's capable of. And to be perfectly honest, the only real way to figure it out is going to be trial and error, which I find to be incredibly dangerous because if Clay cast a light spell and it turned into a daylight spell that lasted for some time, what happens if I grab one of these and cast Lightning Bolt? Well, please don't do it inside the shell. I don't plan on it. Just double checking. <laughs> the, the you po- have not gotten much sleep. <laughs> the point is, one, I need a lot more of this because it seems like experimentation can result in destruction of the material. Like any other material component out there for powerful spells that are consumed upon use, yes, of course. seems like these work the same way, at least it did for the light spell, right? I don't know. Other spells might work different. Like I said, the rules don't apply to these things. So, I'm going to need more. I'm going to need a lot more, and I'm going to need a lot of time to study. So, I guess... My point is, if your plan was to babysit me forever, you're going to be doing it in this room. And you're not going to be doing a whole lot else, because that's pretty much what I'm doing. If you want to give me a clean bill of health, I can report into you every week, let you know things are fine. I mean, what? Like, you've got, you know where I'm at. I'm not doing anything, right? Um, I'm pretty sure we're good, right? Okay, but there seems to be a side effect when you're around this stuff for too much. Yeah, the uh, manic personality, which I'm already starting to develop because of my research into it. Um, this is probably the most words I've ever said to you <laughs> in one conversation, and I've known you for weeks. 
um, the um, obsessive nature that the product takes upon one's mind where you only want to know more about it and the more you know about it uh, the more questions you have about it and the more questions you have about it the more you need which is probably causing some sort of addictive reaction very similar to a drug the point is there are very, very few minds out here that can get a grasp on this, and I'm one of them, and I doubt you'll find another one in this town. So while I'm incurring some of these effects, at least I am aware of it. There is at <laughs> least a chance that that could lead to a horrible situation, especially with your magic. Are you sure you don't want to go through a third party? You're, you're talking about the uh, chance of increased aggression, right? So I've got a theory about that. The people that have been dealing with this substance in town who know very little about it but come into contact with it regularly, the miners, the shippers, things like that, they're all calm and goodly folk and they've been out here for three months and they've stayed calm and goodly folk. The bandits and outlaws, okay, a little bit of a different story, right? But what showed higher, higher aggression? We had the animals, right? And we had uh, the cultists. Now, the cultists could have been Stupid. fucking crazy from Jump Street, right? We don't know. Much like the bandits, right? The only thing that is different is that the crystal was embedded in the aggressive creatures. We found the blood of the scorpion to be glowing, right? It, glo it glowed red when you smashed it for a moment before it dissipated. The octopus had crystals jutting out of, its su of several of its suction pods. Right? It was embedded in the creature. These creatures that were normally scavengers or um, things like that, that don't normally show uh, overt signs of aggression unless defending themselves, have become very aggressive and okay. very hostile. Okay, rule number one, don't put any of the crystals inside of you. This is a direct command. Well, I mean, it would be the only way to test it. Well, you can do it on other people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't care about people. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, and you can test animals, but be, be careful. All right, yes. And Strong cages, such as. Yeah. All right. If you get any more of this stuff, I'm gonna need it. I sold my share off, so we'll see. The allies over there uh, that we work with, they each have a share of twenty-five. Right. If they aren't too partial, we can probably get a few off of it on them. Yeah, yeah, let them know I want all of it. All right, I got to get back to this. Is there anything else you need? No, um, get some rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, right after this. He rested, did you take the door open? I'll be back. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and it shuts behind you. <laughs> I'll be heading up to the pirates. All right. Even if I find the informant first. <clears throat> Um, I mean, to the best of your knowledge, they're all kind of staying in the same room. Um, is there a way you wanted to try to look for the informant separately? Did you have an idea on how you might be able to do that? No. no I'm going up to the room. All right, then you go over to the room. Um, give a knock on the door? Or? Yeah. All right. Same knock I used before. You go ahead and uh, knock, and uh, the door creaks open. Yeah. Boss ain't taking no visitors today. Tell them the Griswold gang left behind too much information when they died. Door shuts. Door opens again. Door opens again. Um, you walk in as uh, he kind of motions you into the room. As you walk in, you can see uh, the Drenalian captain... Uh, Darylonian captain is sitting at the uh, table. He's uh, got his traditional uh, vest with four, like musket style pistols strapped down the front of it. As you would assume, this is what they call a parlay, right? You've got uh, eight people around him. Um, none of them have weapons drawn, but they have weapons ready for a fight. Hands are on, you know, holsters and things like that, right? Um, Gentlemen, does it look like I'm here for an issue? No, it does not. Why don't you have a seat? Of course. Brush so a parlay. Parlay. 
Uh, so, uh, they have poor record keeping priorities over there, huh? Strewn about. All right. What do you know? Everything. And unfortunately, not just me. But I have a way out. Tonight, I have a caravan waiting to take you back to the ship that brought you in. Well, that'd be a fine offer, Lennis. But as we had stated once before, the only reason we're in this town is because the river ain't flowing to get us out. So you can put us on a boat all you want, but where's the boat going to go? Oh, I believe that they were planning to take that. But I mean, you get free room and service on a boat that's even better than this place. One, the smell's slightly better. Two, the company's definitely better. The food is definitely better. Been on there. And I mean, aren't you guys sick of being on land for so long? You have no idea this podunk shit town and this shit room has absolutely nothing for us but once again until the river is flowing to get us back to sea we're kind of stuck well i do believe the wood has been delivered to help take care of that so it's not going to be too much longer at least you get to be in something more suitable and i mean it's either that or no, you can deliver all the wood you want, but who's going to build the damn dam when the dwarves ain't talking to nobody? Hmm. As usual, I'll probably have to take care of that. As I do with a lot of other situations. Look, I imagine Sheriff White's mighty pissed about the situation. He finds out that I'm still in town... And he's going to round up a posse, and it's going to get bloody, and you're all going to be missing a sheriff and a whole lot of good folks. We don't want any part of that. <laughs> Our whole point is to have you guys nice, healthy, happy, and wealthy so that you can buy our guns and we can take the shards back home. That's the deal. We don't want to hurt nobody here. But the fact of the matter is... Sheriff sends a posse after us sooner or later when he finds out we're still in town. And he and the rest of them will die. Well, he does not wish to confront if at all possible. And it's best just to leave. So that never becomes an issue. You're telling me to leave two miles out of town in one of the most trafficked areas in town. He only doesn't want you in town. That is all. As far as he's concerned, once you leave, you're gone. Out of sight, out of mind. He just wants to be above it, I guess. He's getting to that age where he doesn't want to chase someone down for something so... meaningless. Yeah, he gives off that vibe, don't he? Alright. He's got some really good wine over there. I'll make you a deal. Let's make a deal. That's what parlay is for, right? Sure. We want deals, and we want mutually beneficial deals for all parties. So, the mutually beneficial deal here is, I need that river flowing. And you're going to do that for me. In return, I'm not going to have to kill anybody here. Which is what you want, right? Mm. I mean, either way, I'm not involved specifically in this. I'm merely giving you guys a heads up. What is it that you do want? to have my image look good if I'm the one that removes you. I also get paid for it. That is literally what I'm here for. Ah, a mercenary. That I can respect. Alright. So, you get that river flowing for me. That's going to take uh, some negotiating skills from what I heard. You guys might want to get up on your current affairs with the dwarves, but they're mighty pissed at Ruvia right now, and Ruvia's going to need them to build that dam. Um, but you'll have to leave tonight 
as part of the deal. Unfortunately, there's no way around it. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of blood, and who knows who's it's going to be. Make a persuasion check. Rolled really bad. Don't you have an inspiration point? Yeah, I guess. <sighs> For <the> same roll. <laughs> Burn for nothing. As you can see, I could care less if people die. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You rolled the same thing. Well, I know. That's what, I'm not being very persuasive about being carried about people who die. Uh, all right. All right. We'll leave tonight, and uh, and we'll wait for you to get that river to flow. We'll give you time to negotiate. And we'll give you time for the dam to be shored up enough to get us just enough water to get out of here. And that should all be said and done. Should you negotiate correctly and get the wood they need up there. The dwarves are quick workers. They got magic on their side too. About 30 days before we got enough water to start getting these lanes moving again. And uh, in exchange for me being so expedient about your request, you're going to do me another little favor. I'm going to need the Lockshire Lanes Moving Company to stop moving product. What kind of product? No more Sky Shards get to Lockshire. Period. Hmm. Now, you can help me in that little endeavor. Real simple. You just make sure their ships never hit the water again. It doesn't seem possible. Or, well... It doesn't seem like we have any reason to leave this it, room. Is it the Lockshire one, a split river? It is. Lockshire's taking it south. Well, what now if Satan's I... taking it uh, west. Well, how about this? We'll make sure all the wood goes to one area of the river where it gets free and clear. And then the other one would be well <coughs> behind their quote. That would work if the leak in this river wasn't up north. And that north river is feeding both forks. See. This is the river. And it splits off this way and that way. And your big old hole, where the dam needs to be built, is right up there, and all the water is dumping out into a sinkhole, where the star hit. Now, once that's patched up, both rivers, obviously, are going to be receiving their fair share of water. So that little plan won't work. But what will work is burnt ships, Ships with holes in them, dead workers, I really don't care. The Red Star does not get to Lockshire anymore because, well, quite frankly, we're tired of it going to the Empire. I'm from Lockshire, aren't I? You are from Lockshire, yes. Lockshire is a, uh, the largest port in the world. Um, it does open and fair trade with all countries in the world, including the Empire. Um, the Darylonians have been at war with the Empire since the Empire started. And they've been very successful at blockading the Empire on the north because that's where their country is. They live in an island country up above the Empire towards the north, right? Um, the Empire does all its trade goods and trade routes on the south end of the continent where Lockshire is. As a member of the Cobalt Shield, I can make it so that people of Lockshire would not be able to receive the crystals right off the bat. Um, part of the research that I'm doing with the Associate Vane, you might have seen them, the Half Orc, or the Orc. Uh, yes. The crystals actually have a couple of unique effects that you wouldn't want to know. And as a member of Cobalt Shield, I can make it so that Lockshire quarantines themselves away from it for the time being. 
and I mean for a good long time. Maybe indefinitely, depending on the research figured out. Make a persuasion check. Just cursed. You guys passed it on to me. We didn't pass anything on to you. Uh, Your dice is evil. Low level uh, bureaucracy is not going to stop the people of Lockshire from getting their hands on that. That's a wretched hive of scum and villainy filled with nothing but crooks. It's ran by merchants and vampires. <laughs> that is true. So a display is in order. Just burn down the ships, girl. I'm from Lockshire. If I'm in And if you want to, if you care about Lockshire and you want to keep your people safe from a dangerous magic, plus uh, maybe just giving a shit about the fact that the Empire is trying to take over the whole damn world and put everybody in bondage and slavery to worship some guy that calls himself a god, maybe if you want to put some into that and actually care about the things going on, you'd forget about the things they call pirate or the things they call criminal around here, open your eyes to the rest of the world, figure out what's going on. Oh, I don't particularly you care what's your profession, so long as it uh, makes me rich. My profession? The Empire calls me a pirate. The rest of the world calls me a hero. So, you want to be a hero with me? Stop this red star from getting down there. Make sure it all gets over to my country and to the elven country so we can research it and we can keep it out of the Empire's hands. Maybe put it into the tyranny that's been taking over this entire realm for so long. So clap. Well, I'll have to workshop a shopping idea, but we have ourselves a deal. But I'm not going to kill anyone. You don't need to kill anybody. I don't want to kill anybody. I just don't want the Sky Shards going there anymore. Put them out of business. Put them out of business permanently so that the Val Satan Moving Company can do something good with these shards. I wonder if the Val Satan Company would just buy them out. That might make it a little easier. They've tried many times. Many times, but the uh, the real powers behind the Lost Shire Lanes Moving Company have alternative agendas that outweigh money. Uh, I understand that to most. And uh, you'll see across from the table, he kind of looks over at uh, Johnny Be Real and gives him a, a slight nod. And Johnny's like, uh, my. Sources indicate that uh, Lockshire Lane's moving company is actually ran by a man named Janice Von Kelmer. Janice Von Kelmer has been uh, 14 years old for approximately uh, 750 years now. Um, uh, we believe him to be a vampire of some clout, some power, and uh, apparently uh, the underground undead nations that are ruling a lot of Lockshire and uh, the Ravenhold Kingdom as well that is now currently an uprising against the Empire which is good um, your last character was before you got eaten by an octopus that's right <laughs> um, you forgot your character's name <laughs> I didn't it was called Shib apparently um, Ten was a good guess the the longer lived undead uh, need a connection to the plane of shadow to maintain their longevity uh, when the red star crashed and planar communication became a problem for spellcasters apparently became a problem for them as well as a result they've been trying to amass the red shard because they heard the people in the red star waste aren't having those complications what if they, we bypass the trading company and just trade straight to them that way it wouldn't go out they just go to one clan of people. Well, that really depends on whether or not you think it's a benefit to keep the undead in power or starve them out by not letting them get it and eliminating them as a threat. You know, nobles are nobles. As long as they're not doing too much harm, it doesn't really matter who's in power. Uh... Tell that to the exsanguinated bodies of Lockshire. I think a lot of people would find problems with things that use us for food. 
cattle is cattle. Hmm. No, I now, cannot personally destroy the boats. Even if we did want to support them, which is viable with Ravenholt being in rebellion against the Empire. We can't have it shipped through Lockshire, and we can't have it shipped through Janisvog Kelmer, because we don't even know if he's associated with them or if he's an independent contractor. Plus, anything that goes to Lockshire is going to end up in the Empire's hands regardless. Now, we could and have been discussing means of transportation upriver if we could get roads built or even some more gnomish technology that's been kind of hinted at. We could take passage through the mountain to Ravenholt, but going through the mountains, again, means negotiating with the dwarves, who are currently very, very angry with Rubia. Give me some time. Leave tonight. I'm going to talk to the dwarves and see if they have a alternative way of doing exactly what you asked. And I'll keep doing my research to see if we even want to finance the Undead Empire. Does that sound good? And we can talk in a month. I'll find a way, means of communicating, or you can send word to us. In the meantime, we need to make sure that nothing else gets out there. You got those ships taken care of? Well, the ships aren't moving for a prolonged period of time, regardless. But they'll be moving before you get back if you get that river flowing. Well, that's why I'm going to talk to the dwarves to see if they can come up with an alternative way of making sure the river only flows properly. I can't take that risk. I need to see the ships burning from this window tonight. Or we stay right here. Well, you guys are already criminals. Why don't you take care of it? It would implicate the Val Satan Nugan Company. Not if somebody vouched that you left for the Val Satan Nugan Company. Can't take that risk. One of us gets seen. Val Satans get fingered for it, and their operation gets shut down here. We need to make sure their operation stays open. You know, from the last battle we had, we had a few bare uniforms of people for the red cloth. I mean, if you were dressed like them, it would implicate the fanatics who have been doing some pretty stupid shit lately. <laughs> it would do the same thing if you were dressed like them. I think it would flatter you nicely, miss. Why don't you go ahead and talk it over with your boss? Ah, I already know one of them is Clay. A little too straightforward. He wants to come in here and kill some people. You don't have to tell him the reason for what he's doing. I know of That's the thing about noble people. All they need is cause. They don't ever look into the facts. Tell him whatever he needs to hear. Just get the ships burned. We'll see you in the morning. And they open the door to show you up. And I'm going to have a cigarette while we take a break. Break time, guys. This is a good game so far. I'm loving it. So sorry about the downtime for the rest yeah. of you in that. The, there was a lot of information that needed to get dumped, and he chose to go alone, and you chose to send him or her. <laughs> Fourth dimension. Yeah. So we will get back to what happened in the bar while this was going on, and we will get back to what happens at Cheryl's place while this was going on.
Bar, is there anything you guys are doing besides just enjoying the festivities? Um, I'm talking with Cole, trying to get a better um, understanding of my surroundings, the people, if you know, uh, information on all the different groups, you know, just very um, inquisitive while I'm sipping on my champagne. Plug in the bartender for information. Yes. Well, Colt Well seems to be a man of uh, class and sophistication. Um, he obviously operates as somebody you would easily recognize as a man of uh, nobility. He, um, <coughs> uh, he definitely uh, comes from old money stock. Um, but with that said, he has the, the mentality, while he has the manners and training of old money, he has the mentality of young money. And it looks like he has spared no expense at making this the most extravagant bar in a very podunk area, right? Um, obviously his, uh, his ambition is to capitalize on the sudden wealth of people that don't normally have wealth. And as people are striking it rich on the Red Star claims, there's only one place in town for entertainment. His. And he's hoping that pays off for him in the long run. Um, uh, as you, uh, talk to him about the various people in town, go ahead and give me a persuasion check as you try to uh, glean information out of him. Um, fairly low DC because he's fairly open to giving information. Sixteen. Sixteen. So yeah, he'll uh, he'll talk to you about uh, the town's history. It's not very long. Um, the town has existed for about three months. Uh, your journey from up north took you about a month because uh, teleportation magics aren't really working right now since the Red Star hit. So you had to take the long distance of actually taking a ship out here, right? So the town only existed for about two months when you started your journey. It's about three months old now, a little bit older, right? And um, and business, it is a booming. Um, since, uh, since the inception of the town, um, they've gone through multiple population jumps and declines as um, people would strike it rich, other people would rob them. Um, gunfire and shootouts are not very uncommon here. Um, people that are able to afford these expensive guns yet have no real training or restraint when it comes to using them. They don't necessarily respect the weapons yet, right? And as a result, uh, people the population in town can flux between about 150 people to about 80 people at any given time. Um, the graveyard is unusually large already for a town that's only existed for three months. Um, there are several power players in town. Uh, most of them are the shipping companies. Um, so uh, the Lockshire Lanes uh, uh, shipping com or moving company is... Um, Obviously, based out of Lockshire, they bring up lumber and um, and supplies that don't exist in the waste from Lockshire, and they exchange those for the uh, the claim settlers uh, star shards and ship them down south to Lockshire, where they're of great interest to the uh, the mages there. Um, the Cobalt Shield is very interested in them. Uh, those are the mage police essentially. Um, and then several private organizations, including the Lockshire Lane Shipping Company themselves, is rumored to not even sell a lot of them off. They're keeping a lot of them. And um, for whatever reasons, the owner wants. The Val Satan oh. Moving Company obviously is doing very similar operations, just in another direction. They're shipping everything out to the sea, and they're using a combination of their own ships and Darylonian ships to ship the goods up north towards uh, the elves and uh, to Darylon itself. Um, the, uh, the Red Star followers have got, garnered a very large following for a cult that's only existed for a year. 
and they've actually gained a lot of clout amongst the religious types as more and more people are being disconnected from their gods around the world and seeing the Red Star followers are still able to cast their clerical magics, they're drawing in a lot of new young followers that weren't necessarily cemented in their faith to their gods and are more quick to jump ship to whatever gods, you know, can prove themselves by offering power, essentially, right? So they're getting a lot of followers, and as a result, they're getting a lot of followers of all types. Um, they're getting, you know... Um, some really good, helpful, holy men and women, and they're getting some fanatical wackadoodles. And as a result, they have a very volatile reputation around town, but at the same time, being the only source of healing magic around town in a place where gunfire is very common, they've also built a fair bit of clout and power in the city. Um, uh, Sheriff White has a very good reputation with the folks around town. Uh, they almost see him as like a uh, patron of the city, and most folks are willing to trust him and go to him with their problems. Seems like he's built a really good reputation. Um, the one, since you rolled so high on your persuasion, the one bit of dirt you can get on him is something you kind of already keyed in on a little bit, um, is that he doesn't want outside influence on his town. He wants autonomy. He wants to be left alone. He does not want the Ruvian government involved in any way, shape, or form. And as a result, uh, again, since you rolled so high on your persuasion, you are able to glean out of him that uh, Sheriff White has sounded a bit nervous about having a Cobalt Shield uh, person in town right now and maybe keeping a close eye on her um, just because she's a little too big, a little bit too involved with the Ruvian government to be in his town. And he's still trying to fill her out and see whether or not she's somebody that can be worked with. <coughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it, essentially that's the, most of the information you'll get in just casual conversation with Colt Wells as you're sitting there having drinks and pulling information out of him. Um, he himself, at the end of the conversation, seems very pleased with you and enamored that, uh, that you're in his fair town. And um, go ahead and give me a perception check since you've spent this much time in the bar. Twelve. Twelve? That's all it takes for this one. You rolled over a ten this time. It's very easy to tell uh, this time that you are getting a lot of male attention. <laughs> a lot of male attention. And as it starts to dawn on you, as you look around, the population of New Fork is approximately 99% male. <laughs> they only have three women. And you so. guys happen to be operating in a party that travels with three females. <laughs> and the only other place they've ever seen three females walking together is the three saloon girls that work and are currently working in this busy night <laughs> at the, uh, the Fat Angel. Uh, but yes, a lot of male attention is sent your way, but um, being that they're not too fancy folk, at this point in the evening when no one's too deep in their cups yet, you have not been actually approached yet, but there are a lot of eyes on you. And you have seen several people approach Skinwalker Jane, which she promptly squares off, uh, scares off by talking to a uh, speck of dust or something, right? But, um, and then he said, <laughs> could you believe that? But you have, you have seen several gentlemen uh, approach, um, and several of them look like they want to approach you, but just haven't mustered up the courage yet. Um, I also want to arrange accommodations. Uh, no problem, no problem. So um, go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll just let your persuasion check carry over to that. Um, and uh, so if you wanted accommodations, uh, a modest room, a uh, fine room, what are you looking for? Mm, we'll go with modest because I've spent the last 200 years. In modest the room and board is two gold a day and modest accommodations are much better than your woodland mountains that you're used to as far as comfort goes. As far as peace of mind and um, autonomy that you sought, the reason why you seek the wilderness in the first place, you can't really get too much of that living above a bar. Um, there's always some noise, right? 
Um, but as far as comfort level goes, the modest accommodations here are very, very nice. Soft bed, soft pillow, clean sheets. The room smells nice. You get your own locking door. It's got its own locking cabinet inside the room. Um, you can order room service whenever you want, that type of thing. Okay, and it was two gold per... Two gold per day. All right, so I'm going to go... For the record, for those accommodations, most are charged four gold a day, but you got a discount for your persuasion check. Nice. All right, so I'd like to uh, prepay him for a month's... Wow. Work. 60 gold. 60 gold. <laughs> Use that good persuasion check while you roll it. Book in advance. Smart girl. <laughs> Chaos likes it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Skinwalker Jane, were you doing anything out of the ordinary in the bar? I, I mean, out of the ordinary for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm surrounded by guys. You are surrounded by guys and a lot of male attention, yes. And each one of them wants to talk to me, but each random thing's just hopping in my head, and I'm just telling them, Five minutes hey, later, she's special you, with sleep. <laughs> do you, did you see the bear? Did you see the bear, the great bear that talks? And the spirit in the sky? I'm really just giving it to them all. Give constantly. me a persuasion check. With advantage? Because he's very, very approachable. <laughs> it's very goth to have um, one black nail, Carlos. Very goth. Very goth, yeah. A what? Yeah, He's making fun goth-y. of your finger that's going to fall off. I've been telling you to see a doctor about that. No, it'll fall off and then it'll come back. That, that happens to everybody. Not Just, to me. No, if you, have, if you smash your finger enough that it bruises all the way through, it'll fall off and then grow, regrow back. It takes forever. But you, oh, what did you say? What if the nail grows into another Carlos? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just ship it like the rest. Three times, by the way. What was it? Uh, persuasion, persuasion check. check. Uh, to the glue farm like the others. <laughs> oh, then straight 15. That's funny. Straight 15? No. Nope. Actually, you know, the first couple guys you scare off, right? And uh, eventually, um, an older gentleman, big grizzly Adam's beard. He's got one of those, like, kind of ruffled. Um, you know those guys that tr- look like they're trying to look nice? out on the town, but all they got is like their old scrubs, right? So he's got like a hat that maybe used to be a top hat, but it's crushed in on one side type of thing. And you can tell he tried to straighten it, but it just doesn't hold up. And um, he's got one of the uh, handkerchief ties kind of tied loosely around his neck, pulled out. Uh, A little bit of gray in the beard. He's a little bit older gentleman. He's got, um, you know, the crow's feet around his eyes and things like that. Deep, deep, you know, you can tell he's been out in the sun a lot. Like leathery, tan skin, right? And uh, he he comes over. You said you were looking for the bear? I was looking for the bear. Yeah, we we got one. We got one. Can you get rid of it? We got a bear to get rid of? Yeah. Big bear? Came into our camp. Ah. <laughs> Burned burn your house down. I just killed a mosquito. <laughs> came in, came into our camp and uh, ate all our food. Over the last uh, week, week and a half, we uh, we came to town, tried to uh, get some help getting it out, but they said uh, they didn't have anyone to send out there. Be mighty obliged if you come run it off for us. Uh, I need the bear. I need the bear. Well, you you can have it. Okay. You can have it. Hey, let me speak to the rest of my crew, especially the man that falls down a lot, and uh, maybe we'll get rid of that bear for you. Um, where's this bear at? Can you give me a... It's been skip? eating all the food in our claim, and uh, he kind of grabs some salt off the table and pours it on the table and starts drawing like a crude map of the area with his finger. And he's like... You got the rivers here and the rivers here, and uh, you know uh, you know where the uh, the moving company docks are right here. And he draws a little X. If you go about uh, half a day's ride northeast of there, you're gonna cross the river, right? You're gonna keep going. You're gonna find uh, where it starts to get a little bit hillier, a little bit rockier. We got a claim of Star Shard right there that we're camped out at. And uh, this damn fucking bear ran us all off. And we're stuck here. It's a good claim, too. Uh, it'd be worth to get it back. 
And uh, what's it worth to? You? Well, how fast could you get rid of it? Um, Clay's not here, but I'll need to talk to the rest of my crew once we get there. Word gets out that we had to abandon this claim. We're we're at risk of people jumping it, taking really? it from us. Huh. So the faster you can move, the we more could offer you something. But if the claim gets jumped by someone else and we can't get it back, well, that's kind of where all our money's wrapped up. I wouldn't be able to give you a damn dime. All right. Sounds like great. Man, I get a beer. Yeah, you can have a damn bear. Take the fucking bear. I get the bear. All right. So I'm going to go back. Uh, is this it? Is this the end of his conversation? Mm -hmm. Or just still have more about a claim? And I'm pretty sure my uh, associates would be interested in the claim part. I'm only interested in the bear part. Because the wind told me to take the bear. Well, I don't give a damn what your interest is. If the bear is gone, then my interest is served. Okay. It's a good claim. Shaking the man's hand. Thank no. you for the information. No, the whole no, time. thank you. We need more. We need more adventuring types to help with this stuff. I'm glad you came to town. Side quest. Welcome to the side quest. <laughs> <laughs> what is it exactly? I'm gonna use the side quest as part of the main quest. Watch. <laughs> what is it exactly that a smart um, adventurer you always in? does? <laughs> um, I was at the, I need how an close excuse are you to be to out of town for the, the night? <laughs> oh, that's at the Lawrence because I'm talking under the table with the old timer who's telling me he's got a claim. That he, he how says, close am I to him? Oh well, yeah, um, she, Skinwalker Jane was sitting right next to you at the bar, so you saw this guy approach her and you see them having a conversation. Did you, I? You would have overheard. You would have overheard most of it. You know, there's spikes of volume in the room because it's very rambunctious. But if you're trying to listen into the conversation, you wouldn't have a problem doing it. Okay. So um, I go over to him and I, and, or sorry, her, and I ask, so what exactly she is it? She sees her the fourth wall. Uh, <laughs> what exactly is it that you plan to do with this bear? Oh, that's up to the wind and the great spirit. What Mother Earth tells me is, a most likely a more powerful change or just a regular change or I just need the components from that bear to turn into a bigger bear and a meaner bear so I can maul people in case they want to kill me. Okay, so... Because that guy falls a lot. You know, the guy with the hat? Yes. Yeah, he tends to fall a lot. Yes. And for some, reason, for, for some reason, he's always getting into random trouble. And for some reason, the Great Spirit has told me to follow this man and keep an eye on him and keep him alive for whatever reason. So by components... Well, that and to heal the earth. Because this place is a shithole. Have you seen outside? That's not natural. That's red. That, that is not that is not brown dirt. Yes, I have had my difficulties with this. I'll, also, did you, you didn't see the giant octopus with the, with the crystals. That's not natural either. Okay, so um, just focus for just one moment. <laughs> Literally, I have to say focus. The there has not been Jane. one game session where someone didn't tell Skinwalker Jane to focus. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> 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 Kill the bear and take the bear is not natural. The bear is not natural. The bear is not natural. Okay. The crystals? Did you see the little crystals? No, you didn't see the crystals. Well, there was an Asian guy with us. His name was Shen. He got wrapped up, dragged into the water, and eaten by a large octopus. The octopus I saw that. His head came clean off. Uh, see, he saw that. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I don't know why people keep calling me crazy. But he might crazy. still be in there as he looks up at the stuffed octopus <laughs> that's now hanging in the fat angel. <laughs> <laughs> so all these creatures are super aggressive, and I have to now they're hunted the earth my, and set things straight. Body. So awesome. we need to kill this bear, get the components, and make sure that there's not a bear like that. That uh, rip Noel's first character. Like, had an unfortunate accident of a uh, critical at level one. With Reginald dancing. May I join you? Different of course. Character. Oh, there's going to be a lot of those little crystals you guys are into. You mean like this one? And I, I would like to try to communicate with the bear before any action. There's no communication taken. with the bear. Once the bear is possessed by these little crystals, there's no communication. There can't be no communication. They're, they're highly aggressive. Uh, you ever see a bear in rutting season? Yeah. A male bear in rutting season. Yeah, that's... Now you see our plight. <laughs> it's not. It can't be communicated with. Okay. It's it's now... just... 
a giant aggressive bear. It wants to kill everything. It doesn't want to mate with anything. It just wants to kill everything. So if we can put this bear down, I can get the components, and I can see what makes it tick. So I can see other animals and see what makes them tick and stop and de-tick this whole situation. Speaking of ticks, let me see that one. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful plan. Thank you. Run away. Run away. <laughs> There's my role plays. She, she kind of just goes back to the bar looking over her shoulder trying to contemplate what just happened. <laughs> Can I walk in at this moment? No. <laughs> <laughs> you arrive at Cheryl's house. Cheryl, me fly. The door opens. Cheryl is standing there in her night chiffon. Her hair uncharacteristically down, spilling around her shoulders. Her characteristic mousy librarian-like glasses are not on tonight. What is on is dozens of tiny candles lighting her room behind. I heard you came back to town, Clay. Come uh, on in. <coughs> but the power won't come. Sorry. <coughs> How you doing? <laughs> Whew. Uh, hi, Cheryl. Well, come uh, on before the whole town sees you. I go in. She shuts the door behind <coughs> you. You uh, hear it slowly shut and latch. Are you okay, Cheryl? I am now that you're here. <clears throat> I heard you got <clears throat> back to town and took the day off, just waiting for you to show up. Chink, 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 chink. Uh, usually I do this. <clears throat> okay, uh, Justin said uh, you took the day off. Is everything fine with you? Are you sick? You can take your hat and coat. Okay. She grabs your hat and puts it on the hook by the door. Slowly takes your coat off as she does her fingertips. Lightly brush your shoulders. And then the small of your back as she drops the coat behind you and goes and hangs it up on the hook, acting like it was an accident. Well, uh, Cheryl, you're, uh, didn't expect this. Well, very, very nice. You've been gone a whole day. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I was coming to let, to see if you were okay. And we took down the Grizz. I heard. I heard. That's really impressive. Yes. She goes and she starts pouring some, this, some, uh, some wine. Um, Cheryl. <laughs> I just... I have to let you know that I'm going to be gone for a few days. Well, then let's make tonight count. And she hands you a glass of wine. You drew a I'm bath going, already. I'm going to make an insight check on her. Go ahead. Obviously, she's possessed by a demon. Yes. <laughs> uh, a demon 20. of love. 20? Mm-hmm. She is 100% not acting like Cheryl. Yeah, I know. Cheryl has always come off as a little shy, a little mousy, if not slutty behind closed doors. That's not uncommon for her. Like by the redstone. But she's always let you be the aggressor. Yes. Um, uh, Cheryl, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have to stop you right here. I'm sorry. Not feeling well. This dust has got to me. Um. You don't seem like yourself. I'm more myself than I've ever been. Come on, I drew you a bath. Uh, not tonight, Cheryl. I have to leave right now. Well, then you can just watch me take one. Uh, no, I can't do that. Not today, say not today. Oh, anyway. it's so hard. I can't, Cheryl. I'm sorry. As her hands lightly touch the front of your chest and slowly work down your stomach. <clears throat> what was that? That's so hard. Cheryl, not tonight. I, I gotta go. And I just leave it. 
You turn around and go for the door. And it's locked. <clears throat> I wiggle it. Pull it. <laughs> you feel her hands on your shoulders. You're, I'm Don't pretty tall much. for this. Consider playing with How it. is this possible? Turn around, she floated. <laughs> you turn around and she's 100% nude. You can see her night chiffon has been dropped behind her. Mm-hmm. Cheryl, no. Just one little bath. No. And you can see the four-legged bath in the room behind her. I thought it was a mimic for a second when it said four-legged bath. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's one of the old-fashioned yeah. baths that you use a ewer to bring water to. Um, you can see steam rising from it as it is uh, warm as the night's air has grown chillier. Make a perception check at disadvantage as you are in dim candlelit lighting. I do have night vision. Or dark vision. It's still at disadvantage. Okay. 14. 14. You notice uh, the bottle of wine sitting by the bath. Um, you can notice there's a, a slight film of bubbles on the top of it. Quickly, I'm gonna check something. I made all this preparation just for you. Yes. And you came all this way and now you just wanna leave? I just wanted to check to see if you're okay, Cheryl. We can't do this tonight. I have to leave. There's a huge, huge issue with the pirates. Is either I deal with it tonight, or we'll all be dead in the morning. Resistance and necrotic damage for the spilling hands. I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna touch her. Like I'm just gonna like hug her and then I cast healing hands on her. Okay. Um so you're trying to conceal this? Yeah. Uh roll deception. Eighteen, okay. Um, accepting your embrace, not noticing the uh, casting. Uh, you lay your hand on her, and uh, you feel the warmth of your healing hand spell go off. Um, how many hit points are you healing her for? It's just I can full three. Okay, so you just three of your ASMR healing hands ability, and um, you feel the usual warmth of your body spread into hers as the healing magic goes through, but she has no wounds to heal. Um, you, she does give a slight shiver. And... Oh, Clay. And she puts her arms back around you and pulls you in close and starts moving you towards the tub. I stand my ground. Not tonight, Cheryl. Make an athletics or acrobatics check your choice as she attempts to grapple you. Maybe this is how her ex used to act, and that's why she 14. Killed her. She tries to hold on tight to you, but you break away from her grasp, you know, um, kind of straight arming her and, uh, and moving yourself backwards towards the door again. And there's a shocked and wounded look on her face. And What's the matter, Clay? I, I thought you liked me. No, trust me. I love you, Cheryl. But you're acting... I did. You're acting like you're possessed. This is just like how my ex-girlfriend acted. When you killed her. What are you talking about? I, I can't do this, Cheryl. And I turn around, grab my gun, and I shoot at the dog. Turn around, pull your gun, and shoot at the lock. 
Okay. Um, roll for initiative. As this is all happening very fast. Uh, 13. 13? Okay. Uh, you run, pull your gun, shoot at the lock, roll the hit. die. Natural 20? No damage roll needed. You blow the fucking lock and the fucking handle off the fucking front door. Boom! Uh, everybody in town uh, in... Oh, you're all in the Fat Angel. No sound. You all hear fucking dog shit. So, uh, the sheriff in town will make a check at disadvantage. Um, must be sleeping. Okay. <laughs> Um, as gunfire rains out in the town, um, uh, obvious, um, you can hear people outside react to it and you hear, you hear people running away from the door essentially. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yep. You beat it on initiative. Out the door, girl. Okay. It's going to be a 21 to hit. Yep. You don't see where the strike comes from. But you are struck. And you are struck. Go ahead and make a uh, athletics check or acrobatics check to your choice. Nineteen. As you look down, your arms are pinned to your sides as the shadows from the candles reach out and literally this black silhouette of an arm wraps around you and another on both sides. You can feel what feels like half there, half not there elongated fingers spiraling up from your elbows to the backs of your shoulders as this thing folds your arms in on itself and lifts you off your feet. You're suspended two feet off the ground and before you know it, you're plunged underwater as this thing slams you into the bathtub and begins to attempt to drown you. It's your turn. Um, first action, I'm going to try to break free. Okay, so athletics or acrobatics check. It's a contested roll against whatever this is. 17 again. 17 again. You come bursting forth out of the tub, forcing your way up. Whatever this thing is, doesn't appear to have really a very strong grasp on you and you almost feel like this thing either was momentarily empowered or what have you but it seems incredibly easy to just pop yourself out of this tub as you <coughs> burst up um give me a perception check at disadvantage as water and soap are running through your eyes 14 
14, you burst up and you can see that Cheryl is still standing there completely nude on one side of the tub. On the other side of the tub, all you see is a pair of glowing red eyes with no body attached to them. And then she uses her saved action to attempt to plunge you under the water. I want to... I, I was, had two actions. Because I said my first She action. was holding her action for you to pop up. Um, so... That's an 11 to hit? No. No? She, uh, she goes to grab you, and it's like she's trying to force you in the water, but she's not getting you under. You can finish your action now. Um, I'm going to do the action surge... Okay. Um, wings. You're popping wings? And I'm trying to attempt to fly away. Okay. Um, your wings burst forth in the tub. <laughs> instinctually. Um, you're going to use your movement action to get away, which is going to give them attacks of opportunity. And she does get a natural 20. And she's going to attempt to turn that into a grapple. So make another contested athletics check. Natural 20. Natural 20? Mm-hmm. Nice. She should have just hit you. <laughs> <laughs> As you go, boom! I'm assuming flying out of the room? Yeah. Okay. Out of the place. As all of a sudden, this angel-winged cowboy without a coat or a hat <laughs> goes flying out of Cheryl's house into the street. Um, okay, I had technically your flight speeds. 16, what? Yeah, 16. your flight speeds fucking fast, dude. So I just booking it to. How long do your wings last? A minute. A minute? Okay. Wait. Your flight speed should be only thirty, like your normal movement. No. Oh, it is thirty. I'll take thirty, but in the air, and um, I'm just pretty much just shouting out in town. Show's possessed. <laughs> okay. I bet she is. Oh no no. Make it all sound better. Um But we're in the angel so we yeah. can't hear anything. I'm gonna say quickly think. What do you do? Cheryl's possessed by a demon all Just Cheryl's shit. possessed says the person flying in the middle of the night. Get it. <laughs> okay, where are you going? Bonus action, I'm going to um. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I just gonna keep. That's it. I know my turn. All right. Where are you going? Uh, you don't angel. seem to be pursued. Fat angel. All right. Um, no problem, within a minute of flight, you're able to land in front of the fat angel fairly easily. And, uh, your wings dissipate as you land in front of the door. I go to, um, see Kaylin. Alright. Um, Clay comes bursting through the front doors of the fat angel, looking very, very disturbed and haunted. Um, Kaylin and Skinwalker Jane are sitting at the bar. And around this time, Catalina, you are walking downstairs. You can see this terribly horrible, frightened look on Clay's face. And that's where we're going to end the game for tonight. No! (laughs) (laughs) That was funny. (laughs) All right, end stream now. Guys, thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate it. You guys are all awesome.